Welcome everybody to SEAL Team 7, Episode 2, post-Rebirth discussion. Rebirth is out, people have played it, we've taken enough time away from the end of the game that we can start talking about it. I have a variety of guests lined up. Uh, this is Episode 2, and I am very, very, very happy to uh, be sharing this space with my good friend sector six gaming who uh just beat the game uh i don't know like what two three days ago yeah about three or four days ago yeah yeah so i'm it's, still fresh i'm still raw it's a long game like it, it it's a long game it took a lot of yeah there's like it doesn't a, let you it grabs you as well it stops you. i mean yeah I'll, I'll let you carry on but it just stops you it makes you stop and do things it oh. does it does <laughs> and um it's it's definitely like hard for completionists who have that kind of you know ocd about yeah. games and completionist yeah. stuff like it's really hard to let some of it go but i do i do actually argument that the argue that the best way to play rebirth is to do about half of the side quests on the first playthrough and then the rest in new game plus yeah. um but uh, i i didn't i couldn't do that you know like i'm not yeah. built that way and um but i just i wish i had and i know people that did and they had a uh, uh i think a, a different sort of feeling about the narrative pacing and flow um yeah. so sector six why don't you introduce yourself tell us what you do and what kind of creations your uh, content encompasses and uh, where we can find you. Creations making me sound all hojo. I know, I'm set six. I, I make news videos, theory videos, guide videos, just anything that takes my fancy really about Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy VII predominantly. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into the whole theory thing now. You know, like, because with Remake, it kind of dried out after a little bit, like all the theories had kind of been tapped and it just came, it kind of came become it kind of became about speculating more about Rebirth and like reacting to interviews and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to getting back into actual theory crafting now. But yeah, YouTube, Twitch. On Twitch I just prat around mostly. Just play games, just play random games, have some fun. But YouTube, definitely going to be knuckling down now. It's felt weird, I've not posted a video for about three weeks until the other day. You know, because Rebirth, like, mm -hmm. I had nothing to talk about because I was in because it. Because Rebirth busy. took... I was doing it. Yeah, took... Everything, yeah. Your whole life. Yeah, I, I, I went into a hole with it too, like, and uh, everybody was like, where did you go? And then, then they realized where I went. It but, was funny because I noticed that you disappeared. You were doing your playthroughs, weren't uh -huh. you? Your remake playthroughs, and you disappeared. And as soon as that happened, I was like, oh yeah, he's got it. I can't talk to Baby Seal now for about a month. Yeah, and I, I respected that. I felt bad too because I wanted, uh, you know, uh, it's you're same, one of those people same. that I, I kind of... I kind of talk to and I have kind of like a a real I don't know uh similarity in just like the way that I overall respond to lore and so um you know I wanted to run stuff by you but obviously could not and didn't want to spoil it for you either um yeah exactly I was in the hole I was gone okay give me your overall impressions what did you think oh. like I'm still kind of trying to process how they actually pulled it off if I'm being honest with you. It doesn't feel real still. It's insane that they managed to do it. Like, especially like last year, Baldur's Gate 3 came out. And for me, that was one of the craziest gaming experiences that I'd had since FF7. And then this happens like six, well, nine months later. And I, it's ludicrous. It's probably my favorite Final Fantasy post PS1. If not post, if not everything since seven, if not just everything but seven, like, it's just, <laughs> It kind of delivered on what Remake set up for me. Remake kind of set it up that we were going to go out into the world and things were going to be different, but things were going to be the same. And we were going to get to experience all of those things that we saw back in the 90s when we were playing FF7. And it actually delivered it. And it, I'm not used to my expectations being met so resoundingly. That's fair. That's fair. It's and... pretty crazy. Yeah. And there were bad things. I mean, not bad things, but things that I didn't enjoy as much about sure. it. And there were aspects that I wasn't a fan of, but overall, insane. Ludicrous is a word I've used a lot. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people have said uh, best Final Fantasy since Final Fantasy X. Um, and yeah. I, I get that for sure. I understand that. And um, uh, for me, like, 
uh, for me, uh, I mean, it's the I best will game. Say I've... The seven, the bias for seven definitely helps it. It does for yeah. sure. It does. I, but it also, you know, for me, like also, I was, you know, my, I, I I've shared this a couple times now, but the, um, I was, a, I was kind of dooming, uh, right before really? Juno, like uh, right before, like in the under Juno, and like the second open world section. I will admit I was probably a little bit like, um, I don't want to say spoiled, but a little jaded because I'd done the preview event and so I'd done a lot of the Grasslands yeah. area. Um, and so uh, I was worried that this was going to feel like, I don't know, um, not narrative enough. Not narrative enough yeah. was kind of my fear. Uh, I was kind of dooming and then um, I was like, oh, this is a great open world game. You know, I love doing all this stuff, the combat's working. But I was like, I was worried that uh, it was going to cost, you know, any like the substance stuff. But then once I got to Junon, it was like, OK, uh, this is the purest soul ever. Like it, I got to the bald bar. I was like screaming oh. and, uh, you know, like the it was brilliant. family it, was, it was I had no and I had nobody to talk to either. So family just thought <laughs> I was like in, uh, you know, in some kind of duress. You know, have you gone wife insane? in there what's happening wife in there's going like what why are you so excited about bald people um and uh and it was just you know it was like there that was like oh yeah this is delivering on soul and um and then it was it, it was really for me all a pill so i really liked it um Junon, so i really enjoyed the bald people bit but like one of my favorite bits about junon was the troops following you around when you recruited them and like the little thing, did you find what you were looking for, sir? When yeah. you came out of shops and stuff like that, it was amazing. I love that so much. I, I know there was a ton of like, kind of yeah. just yeah. everywhere little moments there. And it was also the thing where I was like, oh, they really understand the aesthetic value too. Like, because Calm looked beautiful. Don't get me wrong, it looked great. Um, and, uh, but like, the the consistency between like calm and all of the republic of junon stuff that they were setting up and then that being like clearly the former capital and then like yeah. it being like the apex of like a single generation before was like okay they've got world building down it's not phoned in at all this is like they've spent a ton of time creating context for everything so, yeah, it was all woven into each area, like everything kind of fed into it and kind of... Yeah. It just enhanced the feeling and the immersion of it. Like, it's still unbelievable to me. It genuinely is. I'll get to my, my like, next official question, but I, uh, here's an unofficial one. Did you oh. notice the Terrier in Junot? Uh, I did, but I kind of got spoiled on it before I actually got to it. I mm. saw a tweet about it. Uh, and because it's just on the wall isn't it like, it's uh, it's like a random like a sign that says uh yeah. it's a random sign that says like uh uh you know uh temporarily closed and then it's got the terrier um <laughs> and then the, yeah there was a there was some bags in like a hard to reach room or not a like a easy to walk by room and uh gold saucer yeah. too but um yeah so that was that was that was wild to see i was i was losing my mind um okay so uh we'll just we'll start with like the what you thought of it stuff uh question so first of all um i'll give you two so you can answer twice uh for okay. both of these questions first question favorite chapters 13 it might actually just be 13 and 14 you know wow it might actually just be 13 and 14. I really enjoyed the Nebel area. I really enjoyed the Corel area. That was, what was Corel now, chapter seven? So yeah, Mount Corel was chapter seven. So like the Corel reactor and stuff like that. Yeah, where we yeah. first see the weapon and stuff. Mm, I don't know, Thir 13 resonated massively with me, like the trials that people went through and stuff like that. And just as yes. kind of like an action set piece, it was yes. super fun to go through. So at 13's in, 100%. And the temple itself was just insane. And like, oh, the thing with the the, the holograms, the Cetron holograms when you walk into, like, I can't deal with it. So yeah, 13's in. Man, that is, so that, um, 
That's what definitely. A... I I loved particularly the the like last quarter of that chapter a lot. Um, yeah. It's one of the chapters that you know like. It's loud uh, in that chapter as well. Oh my god. There's it's it's all it's also got my favorite music of any of the chapters. Uh, I'm one. I'm upset that the chap that the music in chapter thirteen isn't in chapter fourteen, but I still loved it. Like, yeah. um, listen to the cries of the planet. Like the the weird version that turns into the when it turns into the battle theme, then it turns into the the real temple theme. But yeah, I love the I love those moments. I just loved how creepy the the end of thirteen was too. I I loved. I loved it, but you'd probably be surprised to know it's it's maybe one of the most criticized chapters. Uh, not for story reasons, but because of uh, the, the the length of it. The length of the chapter. Um, yeah, it, it is a bit long, but I kind of fully expected that. And then the short the final of chapter fourteen in comparison. Yeah. yeah. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. It, it kind of worked in that context because I was expecting 14 to end up being much longer than it ended up being. I thought we were going to have to kind of work our way through to the city, you know, to the Forgotten yeah. Capital. But the way it just kind of bam straight in, I was like, all right, cool. And then 14 was, uh, 14 was, Simply, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <sighs> I okay, that's another one. Uh, you're, you're very divisive chapter, I can imagine, but but like easily one of my favorites. Uh, I, I have some criticisms of like some of the music. In there and then i i also empathize with people that were like upset with the um you know the thing that happened in it and we'll talk about that later well, the yeah yeah, the, yeah thing. the thing that happened in it but i love that shit and live for it and felt like felt like crazy. i felt like the game I'm, was made for me i was like oh i'm the only one that's gonna like this shit you know like i was i'm sure we'll talk about it later but there's a lot of additional layers on top of the thing i know so many additional I love the interlude the part, to portion too like to me like the like the first part and this is this is something that people will, will try and punch me in the head over but it's it's like <laughs> the I did not feel the thing about 14 that I really liked is that I did not feel necessarily like the interlude was going to deliver on anything that yeah. meant anything until the end and it did it i really loved all of the moments of of the interlude like with the exception of like the the one thing where like where like Biggs gets shot in the head and then like and then and then zach's like smell you later assholes and then just jumps off the cliff yes yeah, like <laughs> see you never and it's like okay all right okay well never change zach i can see it just... was just i feel like for us and people that kind of get into the same sort of things like yeah. us, the theory crafting side of things i think 13 and 14 are kind of going to be a given for being I, up there as favorites i, I mean because I, of what goes down it's the crux of what we are looking at pretty much right and like you know i couldn't like just re-watch it on youtube while i was doing you know initial analyzing and so i have a you know i've like my copy that i of of, of captured footage of the of the ending from like yep. the last quarter to uh chapter 14 um you know the the my media player counter says that i've played it and this is like a real number 97 times so um that's that's before i even got you know got leaked on youtube and i would i'd still watch it like almost every you know a couple times a day just like that whole segment just watching it over and over and over again there's just so many different moments that kind of yeah See, I'm looking forward to playing through the whole game again with the context of the ending, which I've mm -hmm. not managed to do yet. Just because there's a lot of moments in the end that I think we will be able to infer things from from earlier on. I just need to create the connections by playing through it again. But there's just so much that happens and so many possibilities. Like, uh, yeah, I I'm sure we'll talk about it later. <laughs> but 13 and 14, probably. Right maybe, on. Maybe okay. Maybe chapter 8, maybe chapter 8, 9. I'll tell you what my worst is, if that's going to be a question. It is my next one. Um, uh, chapter 9 was actually my favorite chapter, by the way. Um, uh, I loved Gungaga. I love, like, I punished Cloud. I just, please, like, if, 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 if Cloud spends three quarters of part three just soaking in the blood of his enemies, I'll never need to play another game again. But, um, uh, 
What is your, what are your least favorite chapters? So my least favorite chapter by a pretty considerable distance is Gongaga. I, yeah. I hear you. So, okay, that's interesting. And I have to split it into two components here. Right. The narrative aspects of Gongaga, perfect. Absolutely loved them. Okay. The whole reactor thing and everything completely, that happened. Completely, completely you. hear you. Yeah. But the, the, the map. Oh. Yeah, the map sucks. Nobody's arguing with you there. It is really hard to navigate. Also, yeah, maybe really this is a hot well. take, but like the basic music, not a fan. Uh, didn't not a fan. like it. It felt like it felt like one it quarter like of a near music. track. Like one. It's kind of yeah. someone on the comments on one of my videos said it sounds like one of those, you know, those sounds of the rainforest. Uh, CDs that you yeah, can get you, and you just have yeah. to chill and listen to it. Yeah, like you would see commercials. <laughs> you would see TV commercials for it, or you would go to like, you would go to stores and they would have the little kiosks where you could play the sound of nature. Dude, that is exactly what it is. What? Well, it oh, also man. has probably my favorite music in the game, potentially. Or one of my favorite bits of music in the game. The live stream Hans Zimmer. Music, when the weapon music weapon music's in. really good oh yeah oh my god weapon like music. My, i had a physical reaction to that music kicking in it was insane so i agree right. like i i agree and and part of the reason i'm not like when i when i'm rating chapters i'm not rating the region is because yeah. um uh i've detached the chapter from the region because i have a yeah. platinum in this game and so most of my exploration of all of the all of the regions happen in chapter 12 and 13 so it's like hard for me to even like connect the two um but i i fully agree on gungaga yeah. like regionally um also some of the people worst say the same about cosmo as well that they're not a fan of the navigation in the cosmo area That's there are a few the chapters there are a few annoying things about that too because you have to find the exact specific like uh glide point to get to certain things and follow the correct route yeah yeah, yeah that's that's true um that's another irritation uh open open world wise uh weirdly the region that seems like it should be the most closed off is nibelheim but it's actually the easiest to navigate with the flying chocobo and shit so much fun as well <laughs> i loved i love gliding with the chocobo yeah, yeah um i i did i did a lot so okay uh so how about from like a narrative perspective what are your what are your favorite what are your least favorite let's say segments of of the game um you know what there's not many things that i didn't really enjoy this is I, this i'm gonna guy. possibly this is this annoy guy. people a little bit i really don't like what they've done with brad i get why they've done it you mean his voice yeah i feel like they've done two extremes have and you I heard if they'd have kind of met in the middle a little bit more have you heard the japanese voice oh no is it horrifying it'll make you like the <laughs> english one oh will it okay dude like you know how you know how goku oh, no. sounds in japanese still oh yeah yeah it's like that oh so it does sound like a 75 year old woman and i don't yeah. have an issue with that but it is very different so it's like even more different it's jarring yeah. It's very jarring going from like the old wizened sound in Red 13 to the really young. <laughs> I, it, I don't know. It's just a bit too much. I think they went from. I think they went too far apart with it. They should have started each of them a bit closer together, maybe. I, don't I, know. I did. I did have like a, a feeling like I don't. I don't know. I feel uncomfortable. Um, I, I've turned on it a little bit because. Um, because I've redone all the side quests in hard mode. Another reason, by the way, that I feel like it's a good idea maybe to save side quests for second playthrough is, despite it not being tied to the Platinum, like at all, several manuscripts are tied to side quests in hard mode only. So you have to redo So you have to redo them anyway. if you want to max out all the weapons, all the uh, right. the, the weapon abilities for all the, all the side characters. Which really does come in handy if everybody's weapon level ten for some of the harder Chadley challenges. Um, so it is Please kind of. You don't have to do the chickens again. Uh, we have to do the chickens again. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so that I, that's interesting to know. I I I've, uh, I I like hearing uh, people that have that much of a like kind of positive take on the story. Um, 
I uh, just, just enjoyed it. Like, yeah. it, it was just fun the whole way through. Like, with Remake, there were a couple of dead chapters, like the sewers and the expressway. You know, there were moments where it just kind of felt a bit like, oh, I, I, and I put more than double the time that I put into yeah. my first Remake playthrough into Rebirth. And I think I only kind of really felt like that when I was, because it, it became a point of where I need to do as many side quests as possible. I did the stupid thing and did everything pretty much. But the only things that I didn't do was Battle Square and Gilgamesh Island. Everything else was done, pretty much. Yeah. I would um, sit up, so I've not gone back for them. Oh my god, Jules. The jewel, yeah. Yeah, I need to go back for that. But have you yeah, done the sound? I, I, have I you done the piano? Uh, yeah, I've done the piano. I've got A ranking on everything. I need to get star ranking on a couple. But yeah, very, very enjoyable, the piano minigame. Very enjoyable. Queen's Blood. Oh my god. Oh man, <laughs> Queen's Blood is so good. Um, I, I, so regarding uh, Red 13 um, and the voice yeah. though, if you redo side, qu side quests um, after you visit Cosmo, and you hear those in his in his more youthful voice also like some of the scripting plays out different i had more appreciation for it also i will acknowledge that max middleman is a fantastic voice actor yeah. if he can do both of those voices like that's, yeah, that's crazy, crazy that one punch man is those two voices you know <laughs> um yeah so so yeah, it is it does show that he's got pretty yeah crazy range yeah absolutely fairness. yeah um so just to answer the question, uh, my, uh, narratively, my uh, my two favorites were Chapter 9 and uh, Chapter 14. Uh, um, 13 is in, like, is really close very there. Very close to... Very, yeah. very close. At least the last, honestly, half. Um, but uh, uh, in terms of chapters that really um, I had some story issues with, I... I did not like what they did with the composition of Dine in Chapter Eight. I really liked Dine's yes. voice. I really liked I, I, which I didn't think I was going to. I didn't actually like Dine's voice in the trailer. And well, then, after the trailer, yeah, yeah, exactly. It seemed a bit weird in the trailer. And then I think we spoke about it. Yeah. Oh, we did. We did. Yeah, that's right. And um, mm. and he, he kind of nailed it. And so did John Eric Bentley. And. It's one of those those things like I don't I feel really like uncomfortable uh, saying that it's bad because it's not it's not bad uh, that like I had a emotional gut like tearful reaction when I first heard John Bentley's you know very solemn tears like I mean he just knocked it out of the park like nailed it he really he really made me feel like he had just lost you know um his best friend the trial as well oh and then the trial God. was fantastic yeah and so i i really don't want people to not know that i i didn't that feel that i didn't feel anything yeah. walking away from it but there was just some of the you know pacing stuff suicide by cop stuff the setting itself uh the lack of marlene's grave you know so, yeah, that kind of stuff was um uh it was sanitized in a way that i didn't like but nothing even comes close for me personally and uh to chapter 11 uh i liked the nebel region yeah i did not like the return to nebelheim i get why they did it i didn't like that they turned it into a rehab clinic for the yeah. robes and shinra manor was an atrocity and i had this i was like i was f like i had all this copium that like when you we went back we'd be able to go upstairs you know but like the safe on the All wall, around, do yeah, the, the safe, sa yeah, the, sa the safe code just being like a thing you pulled off the wall was like, hurt my heart. Um, the Vincent boss fight was good, and um, I really like what they did with Roche's character. But hated the depiction in that chapter where he just like all of a sudden has a robe on. I was like, oh man, dude. That was yeah it was a very it was a bit quick the switch over one it? yeah it was it, it was felt a bit quicker it was corny as shit um i get what you're saying about the show yeah. as yeah. well like, yeah it is, it is a little bit disappointing the way that that played out Be because one of the things is they 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 really want to force you to play kate sith because kate sith is a really cool character like to play like he's actually super super fun in especially like an advanced play um 
he's kind of a beast and uh i've not cracked case yeah I, I just know you'll you'll not figure yet. it out and you'll be like oh shit um i've not even used unless forced to so yeah, yeah. and so they want to force you to use every character i get yeah. that however what they didn't do is they they didn't like make the manor creepy they instead of like made it goofy also the box throwing mini games were rough um yeah and the the they tied it to platinum too which is like Ugh. it's like oh, did that? Oh, yeah so God. you have to so if you don't do it the first time <laughs> you don't get 10 boxes the first time you have it's hard to redo because you have to redo like this whole segment of shit oh um, i think i did get 10 thankfully so so yeah that's okay that's good then you're <laughs> You're good. And, 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 you know, like, uh, they did like the, the zombie horror kind of like almost like the real creepy vibe that you would get from that you were hoping to get from the Nebel mansion. They did that in other stuff. So it's not like yeah. they couldn't do it. They just didn't. And then also like the deep ground underneath, uh, underneath Shinra Manor, like, I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. They're going to bring in all the dirge stuff. And um, instead, it was just like a very sanitized, like, you know, almost like kind of procedural hallway yep. area. And um, for just like an area I was really looking forward to, it was a bummer. But I, I did actually. Well, we, we did have a lot of expectations going into yeah. it for the Nebel region, didn't yeah. we? So I, I get what you're saying. It's definitely a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have seen more like cloud slash sephiroth flashbacky kind of mind bending stuff in that chapter to be honest because it would have been cloud like returning to the point of his trauma basically i you know it's like the second place too where it's like that where it's like okay this is going to be where we get all like the craziest lore done we're going to yeah. get it at we're going to get it at cosmo canyon yeah from we didn't get anything off Booger. yeah you know. we got Although but we, we did get the gate we did yeah, get the gate yeah yeah, yeah definitely Okay, so um, let's just get to lore stuff. So um, I have rapid fire. I have some rapid fire stuff for the ending that we will okay. we will get to. Um, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes from now. But uh, were there any? So were there any details in the first twelve chapters that really got your brain bubbling? Like what was what was what was your kind of experience with like oh this is this is a the direction they're going oh what's oh this is this is confusing oh i can't wait to see what this is going to be like what were significant like lore or mystery building moments one of the bigger ones for me was kind of enjoying seeing the way that sephiroth was gradually replacing zach as the thing that's imprinted on cloud psyche and gradually seeing cloud in those uh, moments acting more and more like sephiroth as the story progressed and especially when we reach like gongaga and stuff like that it's insane and then when we reach the temple as well absolutely insane although that's beyond where we're talking about but yeah seeing that kind of devolution of cloud into that kind of cold murderous almost character well murderous character <laughs> at certain points it, that was quite fun to watch the gilgamesh stuff was interesting when Sephiroth's kind of involved in that kind of appearance of Gilgamesh that we spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. But I think now what else? The Glen stuff was quite interesting. Uh huh. I definitely found the Glen stuff to be quite interesting, especially with like we're kind of waiting on Chapter Seven now with the First Soldier just to kind of see what they're going to give us because they're definitely going to give us something that's going to then feed back into Rebirth. Hopefully. And kind of yeah, they weird yeah. connections. Yeah, maybe maybe Existing. we finally yeah we finally get caught up like it right before part three drops twenty twenty eight or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they've got like four years to four chapters. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so seeing the unfolding of the other world as well. Seeing what were your thoughts about that? Through the story, it was it kind of didn't make a massive amount of sense to me. Obviously, until we got to the very latter stages of the game and kind of yeah. everything started clicking. But it was just, it always felt like it was some sort of other possibility, maybe, or something like that. The white materia was something that kept my brain going a little bit, and the fact, like, why is it clear in one and active in the other, do you know what I mean? That yeah. was something that kept me interested, and again, we get the payoff for that later on. Yeah, there was a lot of things, I think it was little things just kind of spaced out here and there, mm -hmm. just kind of dotted about that kind of kept me 
wanting to drive forwards towards the end of the game. But yeah, d definitely the alternate world, definitely Cloud and his descent. That was probably the main one. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. And that's something they really did set up in part one, uh, I think, yeah. is that there, there was always this... Um, it was something that like you really had to kind of look at it to recognize that it was different. Um, yeah. But now, like, there's no looking away, and I think that's that's a really cool way to do it. Um, how about the only in terms? Other one would be the gay. That'd be the only other one. The gay. The well, gay yeah. Trial. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you about that. So I, I I loved I loved I loved that segment. I think that um you know the gay that gay not talk is like the new Bugenhagen, or like guy that comes in and drops all the sweet lore. Like I was so much more captivated. When that yeah. dude showed up, then, you know, then... Which was weird, because I was massively expecting the Bugenhagen. Yeah. Stuff. I was expecting him to know some shit. I was expecting him to be connected and plugged in, and he... he just no. Wasn't. He was actually massively resistant to what we were trying to tell yeah. him. Yeah. He was old, kind of a dick. Stuck in his ways. Yeah. Uh, but it was I liked it. I was I liked it. I was... I was okay with it. I was like, why... Why should we trust this guy? Why do you like, like this? What's going on, Booga? Yeah, I know, but like when you think about it, you're like looking at it in a vacuum. It's like this guy like abused Red Thirteen for fifty years by lying about his dad. Like, and I know the like, and the explanation was so weak, and I felt I felt I felt like I felt like the party should have spoke up when he was like, "Well, we didn't want you coming down here." And I felt like you could just be like, well, then tell him not to. I don't know. Be a better parent. like, <laughs> Or say, like, you could say be anything, <laughs> anything, but he's a coward. You'd be like, ah, yeah. he died fighting. Yeah, it's, there were better ways to keep yeah, that secret. Yeah. Some, or some. Don't keep the secret. Yeah, some dumb monster uh, over there where it's totally safe now. Not, not, he was a coward. You know, like, there's just so many easier ways. And he just kept that going for like 50 years, you know? But uh, anyways, so uh, what well, yeah, were your game. thoughts on that whole sequence? And I mean, at first, it just completely caught me off guard. Like, even though we'd seen it in the trailers and kind of had a feeling that it was going to tie into the Black Materia and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it just still completely caught me off the guard the way that they were trying to... But, but I think the big thing that caught me off guard was coming from another world, like we are not of the planet, that yeah. we can't return to it. That was a big one for me because it was like, oh really? Another world, you say? And then in the context of what we get later on in the game, we know that they're not meaning like an alternate world as in like the context of the end of the game, like alternate realities and that sort of thing. They are literally saying another world, like right. similar to Genova. Like, this yeah. is the same sort of origin story as Genova. Yeah. And it kind of makes me think, are the two connected, maybe? Yeah, are they, yeah. Are there just aliens everywhere, you know? Um, well, it's, it's just very weird, because if they were yeah. from one of the other realities, they'd still be of the live stream. Right, so that's this, yeah. And we'll get, we'll get into, like, the... Yeah, we'll get into the world. other yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. other world shit at the end, because there is, like, a distinction between the different types of other worlds that they kind of get into in the end but um yeah you know but so yeah. did i did i hit a cat yeah oh yeah charles is always <laughs> he's always wants to get in on these so that was great okay i love the gina talk segment and i was also yeah. like i was surprised they were they answered the question where did the black materia come from like what is the black materia i so, never oh, yeah, it, i never <laughs> expected that answer ever like yeah. it, it was one of the because they've had many opportunities to give us like a vague understanding of what the hell that is and they've yeah. never even tried so i was not surprised yeah. that they not only explained it but connected it to an existing piece of lore you know like that was that was wild to me uh, i loved it though and i i was glad that they did it and it also i think uh really cemented sort of the the core themes about uh, you know, despair and extinction and the extinguishment of life and stuff like that. And also, I think maybe sort of uh, added a shade of gray to the Cetra. Yeah, because a little bit, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It kind of, it's all about perspective, really, isn't it? Yeah. 
like they, that's what it comes down to to the gi the, the evil bad guys but to the setra the, the good guys doing the right thing and to the outsider it kind of looks a bit yeah like, well what choice because i mean they just the gi just kind of want it to end at this point don't they they want oblivion they yeah. want the end of everything that, that's the whole kind of point of it so from their perspective what they're doing like if you kind of empathize with them a little bit you can understand why they would want want the end yeah you know what i mean an eternity just trapped in non-existence basically can't he, be fun uh, absolutely and and like he even kind of uh, refers to them as intolerant and um you know like uh and you do get that vibe from the sector a little bit you do you the do. way that they talk about humanity and like the Abs geese themselves in absolutely that scene. You do yeah get that vibe and even the depiction like in in uh in the on the mural it feels like they they kind of have this like the chrome the like like the kind of prismatic selection of them does seem like kind of affiliation coded you know and then and then also like the kind of neutrality of minerva you know and it's just uh so i mean like there is precedent for them not being uh you know like paragons but it, it's just yeah. I love when they go out of their way to, to, to maybe paint that, you know, a little bit Explicitly more. Explicitly just lay yeah. it out there for you, yeah. yeah Don't kind of leave it to suggestion, just actually, no, 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 they were dicks. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So characters, uh, I think, uh, is a very heavily character-driven narrative, and all the characters had moments, like all of them. Um, what yeah. were some of the highlights for character moments and character development for you? I mean... I think again Barrett shone through like he did in Remake pretty massively. Like in Remake Barrett was probably one of my favourite characters. Like beyond Cloud Aerith Sephiroth, like it probably becomes Barrett then. And same again in Rebirth, he just absolutely smashed it. The scenes that he you know his character was in were amazing. Like the dying scene, I really enjoyed it, but like same sort of vibe, the palm a bit kind of ruined it for yeah. me. And kind of took me out of it. I kind of wanted to sit and stew in that for a little bit. Because it was definitely one of those moments. They did it perfectly with Barrett's trial. Because you just kind of sat there after it like, shit. Yeah. And you don't get that moment, I don't think, with Dine. So I kind of I kind of wish they'd done that a bit more. But yeah, again, it's going to circle back to Cloud. And all of the little moments where you see him kind of wavering between the two different personalities. That he's got going on there, the normal happy cloud, and then the really dark, really... Oh, it was just so good. It, it was so good. As far as cameos, Kyrie surprised me a little bit. I enjoyed Kyrie much more than I did in Remake. I thought it was a much more tolerable and fun character. Same with Roche as well, to be fair, although again, it was a little bit weird the way it just kind of threw him into a black cloak. It was just like, right, no, he's done now. There you go. He was great. I mean, as a as a character, like it's just a, yeah. What happened at the end was, I felt rough, but. Um, Good feel. So what about um, like uh, what about like Dio think, yeah. and, Dio and Rhonda was, and Dio was very fun. Dio yeah. was very fun. The Queen's Blood story was pretty weird. It was. I what quite enjoyed the Queen's Blood story. I, I'm intrigued to kind of look into that a little bit more and see how it ties into the world. What do you I think it is? I'd... Who's the Shadow Blood Queen? I mean, the easy answer is probably Genova. Who's the Emerald Witch? That's where it becomes slightly more difficult. Yeah. I mean, again, the easy answer, you could say it would probably be Aerith, but... I think because of Vincent, the way that Vincent described her. Lucretia, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this was a, this was the next name that I was about to say. Yeah, it's a tough one. Like the Shadow Blood Queen, you can pretty much draw parallels with Genova, quite reasonably easily. Yeah, but yeah, I just wasn't expecting that from the little side the side game that we were getting. It was pretty crazy. Thoughts on Vincent? Yeah, I, I enjoyed Vincent. I'm looking forward to get more of him. We didn't yeah. get a massive amount. Yeah, too early to tell. Yeah, we didn't get a huge amount. I love Matt Mercer. Matt Mercer's massively talented, and I've loved pretty much everything that they've done with the Rebirth characters and the remake characters, so I can't see them getting it too wrong with Vincent. Sid. What about Sid? A little bit less sweary than I was <laughs> expecting, but st I still enjoyed him. He's still got that kind of snip to him. He's still got that little bit of attitude to him. I wasn't too keen on the Afalna connection. 
I don't... I feel like that's just manufactured and thrown in there for the sake of it. It feels a little, um, like, implausible, chronologically. Yeah. It, it, it almost does, yeah. That's a fair point. Because, I mean, if he's... I don't know. I feel like they're going to have to change his age to make yeah. that work. Well, yeah, because what is he? He's like 35, 38? I think he's supposed to be 32. Really? 32? Jesus. Oh, yeah, there's no chance there. Surely not. So he would have. It, yeah. it just feels forced. It just yeah. feels forced to give him a reason to help us. When well, I yeah. feel like yeah. him getting money would have been enough of a reason for him to help us. Yeah. It's it. Come on. I liked his banter with um, with Barrett. There was a there was where Barrett's like, "I hear you fly for Shinra." And he's all, "Well, that's not going to work for us." And uh, and Sid kind of put him in his place. He's all, "Well, I don't yeah, really give a yeah. fuck." You know, and um, I mean, though, we still yeah. got that attitude is still there, and you can see it. And yeah. I, I think it will bubble to the surface. Um, yeah, so I just think, I just think it was a bit of a weird way to work him into it at this point. But, yeah, like maybe they didn't necessarily need to. We yeah, all heard like, that literally. speech 286 times loading chapter 12. Dashi, <laughs> I know, I know, because, because, yeah, uh, but, um. I don't think you've gone through and replayed it yet, right? No, I, yeah. I, I've replayed chapter 13 and 14, uh, but other than that, I've not had a chance to go through and redo yeah. it all yet. But I'm getting there. I'm trying to think of other big character moments and characters that I quite enjoyed. I mean, everyone was kind of... This is the thing, it's difficult because they were all really good. They brought in like a lot the of whole... the remake Walmart characters too. They brought yeah, them back, the... yeah. Yes, Tex business. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about that? What do you think, like, I, I mean, I like the idea of, like, a, a legacy of remake characters staying through, but do you think that they maybe should have instead added other compilation characters? I think there was possibly a balance to be struck. And and I think we might see that a bit more in part three now, because, mm. like, it's it's implied that Kyrie is going to be going back to Midgar now, so I would suggest that we probably won't see Kyrie that much going forwards we're almost certainly going to end up seeing leslie again that's that's a guarantee we'll see don Corneo again yeah and wu-tai probably both yeah of probably both yeah leslie but... will finally get his girl oh leslie i was it was weird because he kind of just pops up out of nowhere don't I, later on in the game and i kind of I, I think like a stream earlier i'd been saying like oh we're not gonna get leslie and then bam there he is like oh there he is excellent what about Sol and we'll... gus We'll probably get the yeah, solid He's a weird character, but I I He was fun. He was fun. He had that weird theme song. It's just for coats though, come on. I know, I know. He's also I mean like uh, but the, the voice actor for him is one like one of the uh, uh, like kind of a legendary voice actor is really good and I was surprised that, you know, he was kind of not relegated to that role. Um yeah, Jonas Scott. Uh but like I w it was weird. It's just weird. I, I felt like uh, yeah, a lot was made over him. I just kept thinking, man, you know, the solemn Gus budget could have gone into, <laughs> into, into Tank Ceratops, you know, <laughs> like a better... Oh, the yeah, they took away from us, man. Yeah, I, like, know. I was certain that was going to end up being like, like a Hell House, Hell House boss, yeah. mini boss. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't believe we didn't get it. I mean, we got some of the other ones I was expecting, like Yin and Yang and stuff like that, but come on, Tank Ceratops. Um, it is a pretty ludicrous enemy model, though, let's be fair. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they technically did add they did add a, a Triceratops type enemy and gave him the same Japanese, the same name in Japan. Oh, did so they? Is this in one of the Chadley things? Uh, the Malceros, yeah. Uh, right, it's a, yeah. in Chadley, but I think it's... It, all the Chadley things are, with a few very notable exceptions, are um, our world intel. Uh, yeah. Secret bosses, yeah. What did you think of the world intel thing? Chadley, Mai? I've seen a lot of people complaining about Chadley and Mai that they got pretty annoying. I thought they were pretty funny to be. I they loved just got it. a little chuckle out of I me loved every it. time, yeah. I've always felt like that <laughs> the hate was super forced. Uh, and you can actually, so this is, so if you're in the middle of the game trying to decide, you know, how to, to, if you want to complete, you can totally turn off Mai. Yeah. You can just turn her off, make her not bother you all the time. You'll still get the important bits of like banter between them, where I think Chadley as a as like as a as a thing, it's weird that Chadley like made Mai 
like <laughs> abuser. It was fucking it. weird. Yeah, it was weird. But also, Chadley's like a precious little boy. Like the uh, uh, did you that's do the, the replacement for the Sid and Shira uh, dynamic? That's what it is. That's it. <laughs> They've moved it onto Chadley and Mai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I I like Chadley. I um I think Chadley's like uh he's like the, what I like about Chadley is that there's this really dark story underneath like ultra fucking dark like he's Not only yes that as well that yeah. utilitarian scientist yeah. is there yeah he is still that at the core of him and you 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 get his back you get more of his backstory in um in the proto relic quests in um yeah. in Nibelheim for those at home and it does explain that like it, like we had heard that he was a cyborg you know, he yeah. he told us he was a cyborg after the top secrets fight in in remake, made by Hojo, but you know Cloud's infinite potential like broke him of his chains, and so now he's like this free reign cyborg, and um, when Watch hologram. when they said cyborg <laughs> when he said cyborg in in remake, I was like, I bet they just don't know what that word means. There's yeah. no way. <laughs> Because what a cyborg, so like the difference between like, like in like common right, usage cyborgs. definitions, the difference yeah. between a cyborg and an android is like an android is a humanoid robot. It is completely yeah. artificial. A cyborg is made of real boy parts. So like the, the, when they said that, that he was a cyborg <laughs> created by Hojo, I'm like, are you really telling me? That they Pino like they dark Pinocchioed fucking Chadley. And Would you put it past Hojo? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But I was like <laughs> but I was like kinda like, you know, they weren't showing blood the but then they just were like in the Proto Relic Nibelheim quest were like, no, he's definitely was a real kid at some point. Now yeah. this is what you get. Is this this bizarre little homunculus and and like but he's super optimistic positive yeah. like discovering his sexuality you know the whole thing um but there's like he's still super sus though he's wow, very I, I sus trust him. <laughs> he's very sus like he's very i love him but i don't trust him i don't trust him either he could turn on us at any time but like also like where i kind of i was like okay is during chapter 12 when you they're doing no promises to keep and we'll talk about that next is yeah. is you see that little he seemed like filled with wonder and you're like okay this is a real boy yeah. like kind of but like he's got baby god syndrome because he's got all this knowledge and power and the ability to like traverse dimensions and shit like him showing up in yeah, in fort yeah, condor and stuff thing. Yeah, the, yeah, the like, Gilgamesh thing goes well when he just appears and he's like, "Oh, what's going on here?" Then yeah. just looking around like, "What, Chadler?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you might be too, you might be too strong, brother. And uh, back a bit. yeah, but then like you, you complete all the world intel, and he ha he plays this little cutscene where he sh it shows all this gratitude. And I'm like, you know what? I fucking like this kid. I don't give a shit. I like this little <laughs> Sheldon motherfucker. You know. Um, so I'm gonna f I'm gonna fight for him. Yeah. On we'll Twitter. Him, we will be, we will, Twitter. We'll defend him until he betrays us. Yeah. Yeah. And so. So yeah, that's how I felt about that. Um. All right. Okay. So. No, I like the Chadley Mai stuff. I th I thought it was funny. I I did think it was quite funny. And the Gilgamesh stuff was the humor in the game was just generally on point. There was loads of moments where I just caught myself just chuckling away. Me too. It felt a lot less cringe. Like, oh, like, natural, yeah, yeah, Yuffie, holy Yuffie's shit, so yeah. she's so, <laughs> so good. I, I strongly encourage you to watch her date scene. Um, when you yeah, get a I'm chance, gonna go through and watch them all. Ultra Definitely. charming, I've ultra heard the Yuffie one. I've yeah. heard it's really fun. Like, she just kind of brings out the inner child in Cloud a little yeah. bit and you just go on a rampage. That's Absolutely. pretty much what I've heard about. Absolutely, it, so. very, very, very good. She sings. Um, yeah, they, I think they really made her, uh, I think they did a good job making all the, like, the least used characters in the OG, like, Her trial kinda, as well was one I, of the roughest ones. It was rough. Like, it I was, would say her, rough. Aerith, and Barrett were probably the three roughest. The Tifa one, we've seen a lot. 
The Red 13 one was pretty dark as well, though, to be fair, with the chains dragging him over. Yeah, the chain... That... Yeah, because that looked like just you pure animal right, cruelty, yeah. and that was... Uh, Aerith's, though... Jesus oh Christ! Like, I'm... I, I'm... I'm one of them men. That kind of keeps it on the inside a lot. Yeah. But going from Barrett's trial... Yeah. Right into Aerith's trial, like, I was on the fucking brink. Yeah. I just kind of say like, no, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine? Yeah. No, it's good. It's good, this was a good game. Yeah, that was fucking <laughs> gnarly. Um, yeah, I, I... Yeah, it was insane. I loved it. It was so insane. Um, okay, so no promises to keep, the date okay. scene, all that. What, um, I, you know, one of the things that I really, I thought was good about this game was I, I've never really, uh, like, I've tried to in the past engaged in good faith with the shipping community but always as like an outsider which is tough um, to do <laughs> it's tough to do yeah it's tough to do it can be and um because i i, I want to be charitable because like i yeah. know way too many people that like would call themselves like shippers not in like oh i think these two people sh should be together but like as a aspect of their identity and their fandom you know like the way yeah. they relate and i want to be charitable to that and it's it's been uh, difficult as a as an outsider to like i don't know um find value it in that it just into general human tribalism don't it like we're, we're all about tribes we all support sports teams sure you know, like our favorite shows and bands yeah it's just we're engineered to do it i think it, absolutely i think people just need to be a bit more conscious of it that's the issue of you know, course. When you become toxic about it. Yeah, and but and and you know, there's a comments in chat like that Twitter doesn't make it easy. It doesn't. But I mean, it to be not. fair, to be fair, like it's not great on like Facebook or Instagram either. But um, no. but the the I will say that this game kind of changed my feeling regarding being like on the outside of it. I was we very engaged. Slot. Can we I just was ban super sloth, just for talking about United. We'll just ban them. <laughs> Sorry, you you Brits and your oh, and your can, can and I your and your wrong, <laughs> your wrong football. Um, oh no, God. <laughs> so, this, right. this is, no, no. It's I I I understand. It's important. So um, it is. It's vital. <laughs> uh, anyways, I found well, myself yeah, being generous to the shippers. Yes, I found myself like going inside of the shipper community i was shipping this game i loved everybody's relationship with each other i loved the romance in the game and um i'm one of those i i really liked all of cloud and tifa's dynamic i really liked all of cloud and Aerith's, and i think i've seen all the dates and i feel like it's i i don't know how but it feels like everybody loves each other and it's really good like everybody like i really think it's like there's genuine like yeah there's some weird catty behavior every now and then it's like kind of passive aggressive and stuff like that but it's instead like very human it's characterization yeah, yeah it's real it feels much more real yeah yeah because they're like they're like traumatized they're like people yeah they're traumatized young adults that like were yeah. robbed of like formative childhood so they're basically teenagers and they all really care about each other like Aerith and Tifa really care about each other it feels less like a love going off and having little moments with each other like yeah. they are supporting each other so much throughout the game yeah and they're also supporting the fact that hey like it's natural to have feelings and it hurts but it's also real and it's like it did not feel like uh it didn't quite feel like a love triangle at all it felt more like yeah. these are all really real people and you know it and it felt like it supported one uh more interpretations than than one i i will say that it it maybe kind of feeds one uh overall maybe a little more than another and and people disagree with that and i feel less pain about their disagreement i feel like hey you're entitled to that you know like i it feels like i don't know it felt weirdly healthy and i was genuinely like i genuinely cared about the feelings of all these yeah. people and like 
I've even hurt for Zach, you know, during a certain line in the interlude, and like it's yes. just it's wild. It was wild to see that, and um, but I also thought that like there was you know like the like I'm not usually one for like a scene where I'm like feeling romantic chemistry between two characters. It's really not something that's generally like um, doesn't appeal you know, to you. That it much. doesn't appeal to me that much necessarily, yeah. um, but like the 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 scene after Gonga the Gongaga reactor, like after after the live stream sequence, which by the way, yeah. like the whale live Crazy. stream sequence with the jizz whispers and the and the uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> That was a. I usually just. I that's my Discord language for it. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's that's gonna stay forever. Anyways, so the the sequence was so good. And the music was so good. So right after this, really like, kind of transcendent like, like journey from like, harsh, Cloud almost murders, Tifa after like just just, just becoming full Sephiroth and blowing through yeah. those troops. And then like the whole tragedy of that, then her going through that to the awesome Hans Zimmer music to the live stream, like really good music, like so good. Best track in the game, if if mm. having listened to all of them over and over. And that became my favorite later on. Um, yeah. At first it was Genova Emergent, but um, the like just that feeling of like, oh, this is so so transcendent and, and hopeless, but hopeful and then you get to Gongaga and there's that exchange in the bed with with um you know Aerith and with uh with Tifa and Cloud and then Aerith and Yuffie and everybody are outside and they you know have that interrupted kiss moment but they have that really deep heart to heart with each other and then they open yeah. the door and Aerith is there and like the connection between Aerith and Tifa is it's really tender and like yeah. supportive but there's a little bit of pain, but like, uh, there's also a localization problem there. Like, in Japanese, the the, the thing that Aerith says is actually said. It's muted in in the English version. You're like, what? What was it? You know, so you think it's like a piece of secret lore. But she says yeah. it's gonna be okay, which is even better. Yeah. Like, I love that she says that. Um, so I really felt like strong, like kind of like connection to the way these two characters were like loving each other um and then in the interlude you know there's that that segment too with with you know cloud and Aerith, and i was like man i feel this also too like i don't feel like it's unreasonable to to feel that way for both things and it's just like i, I felt like there's something really healthy about explaining to human beings that they're allowed to have complex feelings like uh, i i think we get like these kind of toxic ideas about you know you're only allowed to like feel love once in your life yeah. and i don't think that's helpful to human beings no. so you i don't feel it once at one time for yeah. one person and things like that yeah and i feel like they brought it i feel like no matter who you got for the date like the way then that the chapter 12 the the the, the song plays as this really like kind of beautiful and transcendent effect on the relationships i no matter what like if you get if you have tifa as your date like you and tifa are holding hands and or cloud and tifa are holding hands and connecting with this beautiful thing that Aerith is doing like um you know if you and Aerith have the date then everybody is is supporting Aerith from the sidelines and like it's just this really i i feel just like surprisingly wholesome and positive and it builds like the kind of synergy of all these characters in this really really good way that really helps some of like the narrative tragedies land a lot you know well yeah because it doesn't it doesn't shy away from it and i think that's the big thing yeah like, it could have shied away from it as a game and kind of been like no 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 we'll put this on the back burner but they didn't they just kind of opened it and explored it and kind of showed all these different moments with all the different characters and their interactions with each other and i think again it just enriches the whole experience especially when you get into the final chapters and things like that and i kind of hope they continue doing it going forwards well we'll, we'll get there for sure they wouldn't yeah because like, it was it was it was, it was really good about the play did you mess around 
with the options, you know, in the play itself. Oh, yeah. I didn't I've... mess around. Is so there... there are, okay, <laughs> so the play itself is like loaded, so right? Good. It's so loaded. Good. One, it's Loveless G edition, right? Yeah. Um, two... I did like the fact as well that when you see the holograms in chapter 13, uh -huh. yeah. pretty much identical. Yeah. The loveless characters and the the, the yeah the humans. the blonde dude, yeah, yeah the the substitute cloud the upset that pretty, one guy. Um, pretty interesting. <laughs> what did so so what did you think about so what did you think about um what did you think about chapter twelve that whole play? Uh, so what were your thoughts with loveless going through the relationship like the date? Tell me your thoughts. Like how, how did that how did that resonate with you? And was there anything? interesting lore wise that you pulled from that so with the date it kind of panned out pretty much how i expected i got Aerith. i was always going to get Aerith, and it, it it kind of pretty much pans out as you would expect it to viewing it from the og up to the point of the play obviously like the sky wheel and everything like that pretty much pans out as i expected the play was pretty interesting because they've changed it up a little bit haven't they and they've kind of tweaked loveless a little bit for that interpretation of it yeah i mean they 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 have but they it was really i was really impressed with how they merged the two concepts yeah because it still fits doesn't it That's yeah. the thing. it still fits with like the original take of it yeah and i like that in this variant cloud is the prisoner yeah there's something really interesting about that um and there's a lot of moments in the game like that though where it just kind of crosses over into kind of almost meta replication of what's actually going on in the overall main story narrative. There are so many little moments that you wouldn't expect to feed into it, and they do. What, one of the best details of it, it was was that was the 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 Cetra tie in was really clear. Like you mentioned there was the chapter 13 stuff where it used the same visuals. What we know about Loveless from Crisis Core is yeah. that we thought it was just a play, but Crisis Core, um, it's like based on, yeah, there's the like there's, a mythological story essentially in you. Yeah, and then you go to the Benora Underground and you find out it's Cetra tablets. So Big these stone tablets. Yeah. yeah so the the Cetra are the source of this play, and so then you see like the city of Guardia, um, but you look at like the aesthetic of that and. One, the clock, you know, so we get the clock yeah. from the Temple of the Ancients. And then also, like, there was this technology to Guardia that was, one, felt Team super... Punky, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was like Mako Punk, you know? Yeah, Mako Punk, yeah. And then when you look at the weapons that you get, the final, your final weapons that you all get from Chapter 3, they're all, like, named after Norse shit. And if you look look at them closely, they all say they're like ancient Cetra weapons, and but they're all very futuristic for what we would consider. Like yeah. they don't look like the you know like the you know kind of uh, tribal um, you know sort of. Well, this is it coming from the OG. Yeah. You kind of expect the Cetra to be a very tribalistic kind yeah. of people, don't you? Yeah. But then you kind of see the temple. And yeah. you can kind of go, oh, well, that's magic, that's magic, the temple's yeah. magic, that's fine, we can yeah. play that off as magic. But then we get all these other additional things added on top of it. It's like, how advanced were the Cetra actually when this happened? Yeah. And something that kept coming up in the early stages of the game, I need to play through it again just to kind of pick back up on it and exactly where it was. But a lot of mention of cycles and cyclical existences kept coming up. And it just makes me think, are we just seeing the next loop of the cycle not only mm. overall narrative wise which is something that i'm sure we'll come to but just in the actual world itself like the central rose to prominence with all this technology jenova came they fell humanity rises to prominence with all this technology and now we've got the second coming of jenova essentially with the reunion yeah will humanity if, and like humanity does pretty much fall like there's still humans about but humanity as we know it does fall in the original continuity right it's like not like there's certainly no neo shadow. midgars you know exactly so yeah are we kind of are we is that going to be a focus going forward are we going to see a lot more emphasis on like the cyclical nature of the world and maybe fate and destiny and things like that that's a that's an interesting 
interesting thing to consider. Um, the... I can't remember which quest it was, I'm sure. I, I remember it coming up a few times and thinking, like, hmm, is this going to be a thing? Is this, but then the later cycle? on in the game, it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like, there's a lot of... They do give themselves a lot of room to close a lot of threads. Yes. Um, and maybe that's all, that's what it is. Yeah, they're kind of giving themselves possibilities and then they're going to sit back and kind of look at it and be like, right, not you, not you, you. Right. Right. And that's normal. I, yeah. They're just, they talk about how they do that too much. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, and um, people on, on uh, I had a conversation with um, on Night Sky Prince's channel and people in the comments came for me for saying this, but um, the devs actually have just made it real clear that they are implementing and feedback before they finalize part three story. And yeah. they also... Which makes sense. They also did that with part two. And people yeah. hate hearing that. Like, they do. I get it. Because it makes them feel like they're not confident in their vision. I get the, I get the, the idea behind the criticism. Here's the thing. Happens in every anthology series. The, the Rebirth devs are just, like, talking about it, which they shouldn't do. Like, that's... It's one of those, and I, the the um, metaphor I keep Being coming more up with open is than they should be probably. Yeah, you don't want to know how the sausage is made. Yeah, and yeah, um, exactly. And uh, and maybe they but it makes they, sense. Like if you put something out there into the yeah. world, you want feedback on it so you can reiterate and improve upon it. Right, right, and that's really that's the bottom makes line. Sense. Is, yeah, yeah. That, that's the, the the charitable way to read it. Um, so chapter thirteen and fourteen were really heavy. Uh, let's get into ending ending conversation here. Um, so, before you tell me your whole read on things, just some yes or no, yes or no questions. You can give yes and no as an answer to. Um, okay. Yes, so, no, maybe. Yeah. So you can you can you can <laughs> give you can give like a, a not applicable answer if it's if it's not a binary. You don't think the answer is okay. binary. Okay. Question one. Did Aerith survive? I mean, that's very much a yes and no. Okay, all right. No in our world. The okay. world that Rebirth is existing and taking place in, I would say no. But I, I, it's impossible to believe that there is no consciousness of Aerith still in existence somehow. Okay, so that's an interesting distinction. So um, I guess that's... We'll we'll get into the details of that. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely but get into for, that. <laughs> for me, for me, like when I was asking uh, alive in my head before I asked, but this is, uh, is she is she alive, or in the afterlife? And if you were to say she's in an afterlife, it's a force ghost. I would say that still counts as no, you know, as sort of an answer. But, um, yeah. but I also I don't. You don't yeah, feel well, like. Well, 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 you don't feel like answering that question yet, and that's fine because... I don't feel like it's... I don't know, it's tough. It's a tough one because it depends how many Aeriths were there to begin with. Okay, all right, we'll get we'll get there. Do you know okay. what I mean? That's, yeah. That's where I'm at. Do you think that the... Um, was the multiverse, the multiversal element of 7R what you thought it was going to be? Again, yes and no. Okay. So All right. All I was right. kind of of the belief that it was going to be branching timelines caused by events. So uh -huh. like an event had happened, like a, a break in the natural order of things, and it created a branch. I was also conscious of the possibility that that could be going on in the live stream, rather than being alternate realities. It seems like it's both. It seems like it's alternate realities going on in the live stream. Right. Because a lot of the belief was that that Midgar had kind of been maybe duplicated or cloned or it was some sort of purgatory that Zack was in within the live stream. Right. And I didn't quite agree with that, but it kind of seems like both ideas have fused into one. So sure. yes, no. I, okay. Um, I feel like yes, no is going to be like... There's going to uh, be a lot of yes, no. It's a common, <laughs> common question. Is Zack alive? No. Yes, so, no. Yes, no. Oh, it's tough, that one. But I'd say... I'd say again, yes, no. His consciousness still exists within the order of things. Is somebody more alive, Zach or Aerith? Or are they are they in the same level? I would have to say Aerith. You but say again, Aerith is more alive than Zach. Yeah. But okay. that kind of comes down to but again, even that's a yes no. So yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. You're doing your yes no. Do questions. you so think we'll come to that. <laughs> do you think okay, so uh 
do you think any of what is depicted in chapter 14 in the end is okay. either a false memory or an illusion? Yes. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Okay. All right. Oh, what? Yeah, something is. There's definitely at least one thing that is, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Moving on from moving on from yes or no questions. What were the white whispers? So I undenied a bit on this. Initially, I thought it was the planet's whispers. But the whispers were the planet's whispers, realistically. Like the original whispers that we had in Remake. The fact that we've got the Sephiroth whispers with the little orb in the middle of them, and then the fact that we've got these white whispers with, again, a little orb in the middle of them, I kind of feel like the white whispers are representative of in Remake, when we have the resolution scene, we apparently communicate with an Aerith with memories closer to the future. And if Sephiroth's able to do some of the things it seems like he's able to do, it would make sense if OG Aerith is also able to mirror some of those things that he can do. So I kind of feel like the White Whispers... I, I'm not 100% on this, obviously. No one is. Nobody is very confused. <laughs> but I feel like the White Whispers could potentially be representative of Aerith's consciousness, but that one that is the memories closest to the future, mm -hmm. of which I would assume would be the OG Aerith. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That, that's my feeling on it with the White Whispers. Okay. The planet's, the planet's still in there as a possibility, but it's that orb in the center of the face that makes me think that someone is controlling those whispers rather than them doing their natural function in remake it feels like they're doing their natural function and therefore there's that absence of anything controlling them whereas in rebirth it's a bit different so in the interlude the beginning of chapter 14 we suddenly start to see more stamps many more stamps what is your take on what those stamps represent? It almost felt like, a, it feels like it could be a convergence of like multiple worlds. That somehow multiple worlds that existed within this overall planetary system that Sephiroth establishes to us when he explains it. It kind of feels like somehow many of them have merged into this world at some point. And that's why we've got various different representations of stamp like all the different shops, the one that Johnny runs past holding when we're sat on the church. Like, as soon as I saw Johnny, I was like, fuck, Johnny, do what? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So to clarify, and this is a thing that um, I agree with, by the way, is that there is the prime timeline that has the, the, the signature beagle and a few select terriers because... Um, uh, reasons yeah because they forgot to uh take Not them out them they forgot <laughs> to take them out when they shifted from the single timeline thing um so <laughs> i believe that that is one timeline so the 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 prime there's a prime timeline and Rebirth, that the remake world. yeah and that yeah. the other world the world of the interlude is just yeah. one other world and a lot of people okay. uh think have have said each stamp represents a different world and Zach is just wandering through different worlds. I, I actually I don't I, think that's the case. I don't until either. Later. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, think I, that's the case until later on. I think when when Zach moves between worlds, they make a very clear point of him going through some oh, yeah. really obvious space. Like there's well, it's a the rainbow effect, isn't it? It's that rainbow holographic. Don't get me started on the rainbow like effect. I have spreadsheets and shit. We'll talk about that at the end of. I need to go through rainbow. and kind of identify every moment where we see it myself. But yeah, that kind and, of on and, an initial playthrough, that feels like it's significant of something or someone transferring between. And and to be to be fair, like I think that there's a real value to your first read on it. Yeah. Like without you analyzing and dissecting everything you know my because sometimes your first read on it like sort of dictates how you are interpreting the rest of of the data yeah but um one of the most common explanations is that each time you see a new stamp it's a new world being depicted so you're just seeing all these different worlds i think mm. the interlude world is one world and yeah. the real world is another 
So I think there's absolutely for sure a multiverse. Gilgamesh is in a top level different world. Like that is just yeah, a straight he's like up transdimensional in there. He, he he's not yeah. in like a different world inside the planet. He's in, he's in straight a up world. He's in yeah. he's in like the type of multiverse that's in all Final Fantasy. He's in the FF multiverse. Yeah. The interlude <laughs> is in the is in the yeah. He's like yeah. He's he's an <laughs> NT yeah. So like the 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 worlds inside the planet though, those are like those are exactly like you said. It's this. There's this, these offshoots inside the live stream. Abilities. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, that was a singular Zach wandering through a world that was not quite a full world. It didn't really, it didn't really meet all the criteria. We never see, we never see like, you know, uh, the interlude covering regions that aren't Midgar. We never see like, and th those regions are all exist in the game. Like we never see, you know, Zack and Gold Saucer. We never see Zack and in Costa del Sol. We don't see or Junon. You know, like it's very clear that the interlude world has these really has this kind of esoteric dreamlike quality to it, and only relates to characters affiliated with Aerith, right? So like she, it's we know that Biggs and Aerith oh, have this yeah. big relationship because yeah. of traces of two the pasts. Orphanage. And yeah. the orphanage, it's right fucking next to the house. Um, we know Marlene and, and Aerith have that special connection. Um, you know, like, I don't think that the vision that Aerith really sh showed was like, I don't, th I think that there was more to what Aerith showed Marlene than just like, you know, that the world was going to end. I think it was that, uh, that's all that they kind of depicted. So it felt weird, but you know, it was like recognizing that, you know, there's this connection between the two that would come in handy here oh myra obviously is going to be there johnny even you know like johnny has a connection all of the npcs like mrs folia is there you know like um all of the npcs even heidegger like it makes sense that he's the one on the the loudspeaker we know heidegger was like a an asshole you know like the turks being there like not a big deal in general yeah kyrie kyrie has a relationship in and the kids are all right she has a yep. Uh, she's we meet her in the church she knew the flower girl like there's there's um there's dialogue about that in 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 the book so this whole interlude world is really Aerith dependent and so i for one only thought that when zach was crossing through worlds when we see him like we see sephiroth pushing him into yep. like the ground and he falls into a world that's world traversal i in the church where yeah. he falls backwards through the flowers and then appears in a different church. I think those are the the when actual world traversal. Actual yeah. world traversal yeah. we see. I think that the reason we're seeing different stamps is to let us know that the nature of that world, that dreamlike world, is much more predicated on like the experience of like the POV characters, right? Or maybe not even the POV characters, but just like you know, it's it's ever changing because what we know, those are worlds within the live stream. What are the worlds made of? Or what are what is the live stream made of? Memories. Memories right? Yeah. So so these it's So this all... is what so I have a slightly different thought on the world to you, but only barely. So I agree. I don't think Zach's traversing through different worlds until later on when yeah. he's being pushed through or, those or when, he's when he's beamed yeah, in. When he's beamed into the world, yeah. In. Yeah. But I kind of feel like this world, that that kind of prelude world, is, uh -huh. it almost feels like a, a snatch at the end of Remake, Aerith created this one world out of several others that existed within the Midgar kind of existence. So her memories of Midgar were used to create this world out right. of other worlds that already existed so i agree exactly the same result yeah but that's kind of I, I feel like that's potentially where it came from i think i think that world yeah. that inner world interlude world was created well, that's why i think we see different stamps because they were oh so, memories oh so, so she the pieced originally them were memories that she's grabbed and gone oh and that's why we see a stamp there a stamp there a stamp there that's interesting it's a, it's a it's an accumulation of the memories that Aerith experienced within Midgar. Oh, I like that. I like that. That was kind of what I felt. Also, 
How much did you lose your shit when you got offered the sweets, the purple and green sweets? I loved it. Because I kind of did a little bit yeah. internally. I was like, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Because that's just live stream representative and negative yeah. live stream. And it was just immediately like, oh my God. So it's that concept is in this memory world now. Yeah. And then you've got Sephiroth starts following around. Like, oh, there you are. Yeah. And uh, so um, I like that. Like, maybe she. I do think that that world is sort of a result of Aerith. And I think that. Yeah. 100%. I think it's a result of what she does when she it's casts whistle casts whistle. casts that on the portal. Yeah. I I actually think that's when the 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 white materia becomes empty. Split. Is when she casts it. I think she's trying to hide it. I think she's tried to hide it and the black materia because when Sephiroth gets the black materia, he says this yeah. is the key to the real fragment between worlds. I had the same thought. I feel like they work the same way. So that what yeah. what Aerith is doing with it is at that point she's got more of a connection to, you know, Omni Aerith, like Livestream Aerith, the one that's kind yes. of the the maiden yeah, she that's says traveling that gets the planet. Away from her afterwards, don't yeah. it? That all gets taken from her. So yeah, she's really connected at the end of remake. She's fucking there. So I, I think that what she's done at the end of remake is cast the same unlock spell you know that she's uh, she's unlocked the real white materia in the place between worlds and yep. the black materia exists there too um and uh and part of the reason i think that is that when you come back from the interlude like the um and you have that scene in the sleeping forest Sephiroth. with after after Sephiroth with eric oh, okay when you're talking to Aerith before you remember, um, it's the it's before the bright the green up, yeah. yeah it's the bright green sleeping forest where you're having this oh, conversation. She takes the white material. You hand the you hand her the yeah. white materia, and it's full, right? Yep, it's powered up. It's powered up. She puts it in her hair, and if you Gives look you... really closely, oh. the rainbow comes off of it. And then she hands this is you where the. I need to go through again. And she hands you the empty one back. So what? So what it's representing is that you went into this interlude world, gave future Aerith, the gave future Aerith the real white materia, the one that she can actually pray with, you know. And um, and so like, I, I really do think that you know, based on based on my interpretation, is that the the rainbow is representative of the um you know the the white live stream uh which is okay. live stream that is that is being purified by holy like in a omnitemporal sense and so the reason why uh the reason why i think that is that uh the the whispers still look like robed clones and so i think that the the planetary whispers had started their corruption before we started remake that's why yeah, they look it was like already on the way that's why they look like robes you know and so the reason that they look like white robes now is because holy's purification of the lights live stream happened after and it's also like emblematic of the of the core theme of final fantasy 7 which is the purification of the planet of the of, of the live of, stream and of soldier everything of soldier of Sephiroth in so the white so the black material the black robes turning white is indicative of Cloud's internal journey so to me too from there. yeah and so I think that's oh, it's kind of a thematic too thing um so okay I I, I like I, I really like that so okay we the the interlude theme the interlude scene is super dense ultra complex there's a bunch of like bunch of stamps there's a lot that can be like dissected from it there's a ton of different interpretations um here's one what do you so when zach makes his choice yeah which path to go what, what so he goes right and then we see the big flash of light that comes out of the left tunnel right what do you think's going on there okay so i think i i don't think that he has created a new world with that choice i think that was well, just i do i think that was just directional okay here's what i think happened here's the order of events he was let they were letting us know that he just came from sector five yeah 
the next time we see we see Cloud and Aerith, they're in Sector 5. Because I think what's being indicated there is that um, Aerith and Cloud have left the Terrier timeline and he, she's transported their live stream consciousness. And so I think that's just representative of Cloud and Aerith showing up in that, in Sector 5. I don't think it's actually indicative. I get that. I get that read, though. Yeah. Because Whether it's the rainbow would, effect. Go in that way. Yeah. Creates that ending that we see for him and Biggs. Right. I I totally that, get the that. The him that goes to save Cloud fails because when you get to the Shinra build, yeah, you've got those troops there. Everything's black. There's no everything's light. everything's There's black. Nothing. But I'll tell you what else there is that was a little too dark to see. There's oh, a terrier behind him. Oh. <laughs> There's a terrier right behind him when he's when he's in the Shinra building. And then when Biggs is eating Stamp Champs, yeah, in that they're scene. pugs. So this he, is what I mean. This is why I think has he. Well, okay, but so the, he the that exists in the Terrier goes and fails, right? And then in the new world, we get the alternative for Zack Maybe I, I don't know why that would be the case. It I just, think that was what it felt like. I think it's more representative of the characters that are composing the scene. Like I, I do think that it's yeah. kind of more vibes. Like I think Pug. Sort of represents like Biggs's personality here. He's very stubborn. He's you know, um, he's bullheaded. I think the um, and then I think the reason that there's a uh, a you know a different dog, which I think people are saying is like a Shih Tzu or I don't I don't know. Something. Uh, it was and, something. So the Shih Tzu timeline. I don't think that's that's really a timeline. I think it's just that what we're seeing is is um since this is you know in the live stream it's you know this this very interlude dreamlike world yep. it doesn't it doesn't really match the rules of the real world so to speak it's more like reflective of its contents and in that scene its contents are out in Aerith. and so i think that yeah the, so the world's kind of reacting to whatever they do and zach's going through yeah that. That, yeah. that's, no, my no, that that's, that's my read on it that's that's my read on it but a lot sense. of people a lot of people are like really certain that each 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 stamp represents a choice that zach made and i i think that's viable too um the reason that i i kind of went away from it is um is is because the the white light and the um the rainbow effect is is actually character it's a little character agnostic but it's also it shows up in too many places that really represent that it's the white life stream. Like the place where it shows up strongest is when Aerith shows up on the battlefield with Cloud and Cloud's head. Yes. So I don't think that's a new world being created. I don't think that's predicated on Zack's choice. I think that's clearly no. Aerith as the maiden that's traveling the planet. Oh, you had to, didn't you? Yeah, okay. I do. I like. <laughs> I I got really I got really attacked for for saying that that's yeah, not canon. <laughs> Like, I want to be real clear. The reason I don't think it's canon is because most of the components of it have been overwritten by later by later things. It is in and, a tough spot. It's never been explicitly stated as non-canon, but sure. most of its canonicity has been taken away by other things. And and, and it's also just it's not written by Najim. Yeah, it's yeah, also it's not written really. by... Where people are mad at me is because... Where people get really defensive of it is that it says that Aerith loves cloud in it like super explicitly and, and which i think we get in rebirth in fact yeah like we i think we get it in other stuff too like we don't yeah, need so canon don't need we don't need can we don't need maiden for that to be canon so yeah I, i'm so to anybody out there that thinks it's for shipping reasons absolutely not no. i just think that i also don't think it's bad i think it's so, cool i I'll love it like it's, right. it's fine. It's fine. It's just we get a more like, I don't know, appropriate to the discussion lore from more recent works. That's it. Especially Anyways. that fit in with the overall compilation as well, because like yeah. Maiden was very much granted it was to do with Advent children, but it was very close to the OG still. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it yeah. was still very close to the OG. Whereas now yeah. all this other stuff has been established post it. And yeah. they just don't reference it. They don't reference it. They've never said it's not, but they don't talk about it. So uh, yeah, that's all. That's all that I was saying. Please, yeah. please be nice. To oh, me. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, 
so um you know i i totally i totally get you know where people are coming from though when they're saying that like each stamp is a world and he's just walking through worlds and there's just infinite worlds now and just be get used to it and we're just watching like an esoteric just, mechs but, see, but that just feels weird though like doesn't all feel right it, to except me except for that final thing with the big cloud choice other than that it doesn't fit yeah. I think it could fit in that context, and I need to obviously look at that a bit more and think about it. But I, it feels to me like it is multiple worlds brought into one. Yeah. In I like that. By I, I, I love that. I love the idea that, like, what she was doing was she was putting together broken worlds that were yeah. all in the Midgar region. That, to create a little safe haven. That, that maybe were all attached to people that she knew or. Yeah. Or love, like it's almost like each person is a or universe. Cloud. People that are connected to cloud. Yeah, there's well. just a lot of people connected to cloud that weren't there. So it was like, true, true, it true. felt very Aerith coded. Like, yeah. um, it just it did. Yeah, and like, um, because she wasn't really it's connected. Everyone that it is pretty much everybody. Yeah. For Aerith. Yeah, and even even like in the very very beginning, like the one that was most. Um, was most active in the helicopter was um was red 13 and i think there's some some sensitivity stuff there um yeah and uh the fact that tifa wasn't there i don't think is indicate indicative of the fact that you know Aerith doesn't like tifa or that you know uh she's not a part of her memories i think it's because Aerith is developing a relationship with tifa sort of after that the itinerant worlds were created right you know yeah. like she still persists on after she casts the thing on the spell and i do think that tifa is part of Aerith's end game like i think they're collaborating a little bit on how to save cloud well this is it if it's an Aerith that has these memories at that point at least yeah. in remake when i'm speculating that it was great she knows tifa's role she knows what tifa has to do going forwards in order to bring cloud back in order to yeah. have a fucking chance so now, what, she understands the importance. Absolutely, I think, she does. At that point. Yeah, she does. She she realizes that Cloud is still kind of the key to defeating Sephiroth. Yeah. Um, and she loses that at the end of remake. Yeah. But this is why I think it happens, like you say, as she touches the portal and yeah. casts on the portal. That's when it happens. Yeah, yeah. I also have a weird theory, and it's just vibes. I I cannot really construct this into Do anything. It. But I just get this I just get this sense that Aerith becomes the white materia in a literal sense. And that that the we're dealing with like you said, loops. But it's possible, I, yeah. I can't quite put I can't quite connect those. It's just that's one of those things I'm not really like sticking to yet, but it's that's a vibes one. Okay. Well it so, is it is an interesting question though. Like I mean, we know where the black materia comes from now and right. how it was created. Yeah. I mean, I think we assume the white materia was created by the Cetra or the planet. Yeah. But it'd be nice to know, like, which it was and, like... Because I don't think we've had that established at any point, have we? No. I don't, th I don't think we have the white materia established. So now we that have we've no got idea. the black materia... Yeah. And again, yeah, like, the whole cyclical loop yeah. of the destiny kind of thing that's going on, maybe that's it. Maybe Aerith's consciousness in, the, in, in, in like the original world or just in the live stream in general, because there's an argument that the type, that, that the live stream's kind of omnitemporal at this point. Like time isn't really a concept Dude, that there's, matters. There's no, at this there's, point. there's no way you can, like, you can make an argument otherwise it, now. It's just, you can, yeah. Well, yeah, look, it's just insane. Yeah. So, yeah. which is that's fine. The case, yeah. All of these moments exist at the same time, technically. Yeah. Yeah. So, or some shit like that. With it. Yeah. It's important to remember that the, like, the authors are can be very clever, but they're not quantum physicists. So, like, yeah. if, you know, there's little holes in, here and there. Oh, just, yeah, there's going to be. And I mean, this remember, is yeah. multiple realities and stuff like that. Yeah, there's scientific theories about them, but we've never actually found them or done anything with them or been to one. So, do you know what I mean? It is still well planted within the realms of fiction. Yeah, absolutely. So when people get all, well, actually, <laughs> no, chill. It's fiction. Stop. So okay, we get out of the, we get out of the, the out of the prelude. Out of the prelude, uh, there's the hug between Cloud and Aerith. She pushes him into the rainbow hole, and then, um, and then you see Daddy Sephiroth in the background, and we get the big <laughs> expo dump.
and I'm just nutting the whole time as he's as he's explaining it. Um, love the scene, love the music, uh, and also him just saying, "See, this is what happens." You know, like, "Hey, there's multiple worlds." Everything that was great. So I like the reunion becoming a bigger thing. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the reunion becoming much more than just Genova coming back together. I mean, you could argue that the corruption of Genova is the thing that's created each of these multiple worlds anyway. Like, Genova's existence disturbs the natural flow of the live stream, and therefore the reunion has right. to include these other worlds. Oh, I like that. Because they hold a component of Genova. I love that. Do you know that, what I mean? I, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay, so, all right, we 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 get out, and then, and then we're at the Forgotten Capital, yeah. and then Sephiroth shows up, and he's like, Good Aerith, pray. You fight White Whispers and Black Whispers. Yeah. But only only one only only the Black Whispers open the Whisper Wall for Cloud, you know? And then Cloud goes in there and we have the scene. But tell me, what is your takeaway? What the fuck did we just watch? So there's a moment when Aerith gets to the Temple of the Ancients where she kind of leans down and touches the ground. And she kind of says, finally, don't you? And we get that little radiance of live stream that kind of pops off her. And I don't know if that's a moment when she reconnects with those future memories, possibly. Mm -hmm. Because then that would then inform me for this, what we were talking about. I think she knows that she's not ready yet and she needs to slow Cloud down a little bit. She's not finished praying for Hola. Cloud gets there early. It accelerates Sephiroth and therefore she isn't ready. Mm. Well, Sephiroth's like, no, 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 come on, let's fucking go. Let's go do this. Let's go do this. So he's willing to help Cloud in that moment, whereas the White Whispers are trying to stop Cloud. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that was, that was my initial take on it. Everything yeah. got redder, so yeah. she needed to slow him down a little bit. But then they do just let him through at that point. They stop. They try and stop him once or twice, maybe, and then they just stop trying and just let him through. Well, you fight the, so you fight the White Whispers. Defeat a group, yeah. You defeat a group, and then the Whisper Wall comes up, and the Whispers Wall is comprised the of like... White Whispers hit it, don't they, yeah. There, there's, yeah, there, and so, uh, for me, the way that I interpreted the Black Whispers is, uh, right before Sephiroth ejects you, uh, from, yeah. from your, after his little daddy speech, he says, <laughs> um, oh, I see you're not ready to join the reunion yet. I guess you need a little push. Yeah. And then he pushes you out, and he says, you have my blessing. I don't know what that is. So the, <laughs> so the blessing to me is the, is the, the, the black whispers that allow yep. cloud only oh. to go witness Aerith's death. So, okay. right. So my, the, the whole concept uh, behind the way that I um, interpreted the ending was that um, uh, they've really amplified the despair concept yep. uh, in Advent children. It was like, it was really elevated. It was, it was certainly part of like the DNA of OG, but in Advent children, they added this, this concept of negative live stream. And what negative live stream is basically, it's like the converted stream, the converted food of um, Genova, where Genova can uh, feed on the despair. Like Geostigma is essentially operates on the despair of its host um, yep. in order to manifest. And then all throughout, um, all throughout Rebirth, we're starting to see these robed clones, um, you know, and we're starting to see people turn into them. And oh, they Broden. turn. I know, I know, poor Broden. <laughs> it was so obvious as well. The moment I know, was I'm like, oh, I know. I and so, and and in both of their, um, both both times, what happens ultimately before they turn is they lose hope. So it's despair. And in particularly with Roche, after Roche, you know, uh, loses his battle, uh, gives in, goes to Hojo, and yeah, uh, he's approached by Aerith and Tifa and Eris says that's not going to happen to you I promise and then Tifa says yeah I agree and um so when Cloud is denying or fighting against the concept of reunion in in the head space you know um where we're seeing the convergences of worlds and, and that's when we get to see that shot of him yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so Sephiroth then says, I'm going to give you a little push. To me, what he's saying is, I'm going to give you despair. 
I'm going to kill Aerith in front of you. Yeah. And so, and you have my blessing. And um, so that's, that's what I think we're seeing is that we're seeing Sephiroth aware that killing Aerith could give him leverage yeah. over him. And I think more leverage than in the OG, because like we've kind of established the the, the mental degradation and oh, like much further down the road. It yeah. is. It's much further down the much road. Further. Mm. And so we are it really does feed that kind of like, OK, this this is much more aware of itself. Are there sequel yeah. elements type thing? So then we see so then we get through the whisper wall. We come down to the. Uh, the water altar what were your thoughts on that scene and how that played out so rewinding a few seconds i'm with you 50 50 on that okay i think the blessing is the black materia i agree the despair that you're not ready i'll give you a little push that is 100 percent killing area 100 percent, no questions asked i think the blessing is the black materia i agree i actually do think that that's part Maybe of, it's a part of it thing. too Maybe yeah, these I, two components. Maybe the black materia is the key. Well, I, I think the black the, I think the black materia is, yeah. is sort of the key. It's the thing that the that the black Controls whispers are yeah. are following. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I uh, potentially as far as but yeah, I would agree with that then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, as far as that whole it was exactly as, as I expected it to be until it wasn't, I think is potentially the best way to describe it because he stops him. But then he doesn't stop him. And What's your read dead, on it? And then she isn't dead. Yeah, yeah. And then like, there's just it's it's a tough one. Like if we're looking from my perspective of the choice that Zach made created a second little bubble momentarily that maybe quickly existed and then faded away. Is that what's happening in this moment? Is Cloud's attempt to stop Sephiroth like splitting reality off? Because like just before Rebirth dropped, I kind of speculated on whether or not Sephiroth was taking these moments where destiny was altered in a massive way and harvesting the power from it. That's kind of what it felt like from the end of Remake and it now feels like in this moment there was that much of an attempt to change destiny that it maybe broke the fabric of reality and maybe both things exist at the same time because we do get that that rainbow effect every time we switch to Aerith being not stabbed, the rainbow effect is there. When she's been stabbed, it's not there. When she's lay on the ground conscious, it's there. When she's unconscious, it's not there. So is that like a differentiation between reality and that dream world, potentially? Like, I, I, I don't know. It's tough. And then when you add in the context of the scenes that come afterwards, it makes it even more confusing. Because, like, and I, I won't go to it yet, but yeah. No, no, I, more... I go there. So, so what comes after is the fight. And the fight is fucking wild. God. I love the fight. I don't. People I are. I blew up when we got Cloud and Zach. Like I absolutely popped. I was ready. I, I was so ready I, for it. I was really glad we got it in this game instead of in the third game because I think it's yeah. better here. And yeah. I I really liked the fights when they got split up and then there was the uh, Soldier Honor thing. Did not love that. That was like the only thing I was like, oh, this a little is bit cheesy. cheesy. This is a little, a little cheesy. cheesy, yeah. But I liked the way you know, uh, I liked the way Bizarro Sephiroth fell through worlds. I enjoyed that thoroughly. It felt like kind of a uh, yeah. It kind of like he fought across three realities. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then and the 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 life clinger fight, feeling like the fucking Gandalf fight, and uh, or Gandalf versus Balrog on the way down. I love that. I thought that was super. Yeah, where well, you had to you had to destroy the wing, then the wing. Then yeah, the I thought that was cool. peak. That was cool. It I was very that. reminiscent of the Bahamut fight in Advent Children. Yeah, not so much for the aspect of fighting, but the way that it was across different levels, and you had different character interactions with Cloud as he was mm -hmm. on his way up. This time, it was Genova on the way down. It, it was just fun. I like the way everyone had a limit break except Cloud. You can even equip Goder Damaron, and you still will not have a will still have no limit break. Yeah. I tested yeah. that. So the, and then that becomes the question, is that Cloud just not accepting it? Or is that Cloud not accepting it because there's a reason to not accept it? Yeah. Because everyone it's... else has got the limit break because she's dead and they've lost the fucking shit over it. Right. Whereas 
Cloud doesn't he's think seen she's dead. Her alive yeah. and conscious. But is it that's the thing, is that just a fabrication in his mind, which is mm -hmm. something I'm sure we'll come to in a minute? Or is that one of these worlds that he can bear right. into? Right. What do you think right. uh what do you think what do you think about um like the way that the fight unfolds with you with Cloud and, and Zach, uh Sephiroth like splits the two worlds basically. And then Cloud ends up uh, you know, like in his mental zone. It's like basically the edge of creation. And he fights Sephiroth Reborn kind of on his own. Um you you climb up his giant ball sack thing. Um, you know, and you fight him, and then it cuts over to the Zack half of the fight. And that is that is a very interesting setting. It's like this dilapidated church. It's its own Church of the Apocalypse, basically. Yeah. yeah. It is my favorite like location thing in the whole game. It looks so cool. Super it is a very cool. cool arena. Yeah. yeah, it is a very cool. Yeah. Battle. What are your thoughts? Way, the fights super mirror each other as well. The Zack and Cloud ones, like the same moves coming at you, same responses to them. It's just... You have the ability to do synergy. Your synergy yeah, attack. The synergy attack yeah. between both worlds. What was it? One for all, I think it was called, or something like that. Uh, Soldiers on. I think it was I think. called. So, it was something. Yeah, 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 it had some kind of slightly cheesy name, but it was glorious. Still, uh, like, it's the I, one. I, I enjoyed it. it. You don't know this yet, but it's the one. It's the unless you look up guides, it's mm. the uh, it's the synergy attack you're going to use the Is most you in your life. Really? Yeah, because the VR combat that you unlock in oh. hard mode that includes Zack and Cloud is the hardest one really? to most people, yeah. And so, oh, so yeah. Fun. Yeah, there's there's two there's two that are um uh there's that are two two character ones. There's the Cloud and Sephiroth one and then the Cloud and Zack one. And the enemies are the same, but like you spend so much time keeping Zack alive. It's it's really? insane, dude. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Oh, I, I need to get around to them. I need to yeah. get around to them. But yeah, it was just just that whole. I was not ready for Bizarro as soon as we got him. I I was not prepared to get Bizarro there and then. Little were you a little um, disappointed that they didn't play like the most fucking beastly birth the of most a god banger tune ever? A yeah. little bit, yeah. But they're saving it. They're saving it. They're gonna come hard in part three with yeah. it. So I'm yeah. fine with that. I'm fine with that. But birth of a god. Oh. No, it's it's very interesting. So like, what is that world? That church world? Like, it doesn't it doesn't fit if you get what I mean with a lot of the kind other of, things. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I I I I feel like it's. Is it just a temporary thing just for that fight? So the way that I interpreted it, uh, and this this is just food for thought. So maybe you can formulate an opinion off of this. Is that, um, you know, the edge of creation seems. Uh, has always seemed to be uh, like a remake's equivalent to the final battlefield. Which you, is internal to Cloud. It's internal to Cloud. So I do yep. feel like this it's this shared mental space, right? And um, so I think the Edge of Creation that's just Cloud and Sephiroth looking like yep. it does is really emblematic of the whole struggle. You know, there's the universe of... of of creation and then there's the universe of death the universe of death by the way which is yellow and looks like the line that's across all of the all of yeah. the all of the uh, which is another thing we'll yeah. get to in a minute yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> so to me that that yellow line is the the yellow thing really does feel like it's it's really meant to be kind of thematically it's tied a harbinger of destruction it is it is like it's a yeah. mark of death but it's also like an indicator of cloud's mind that it's Cloud's okay. mind. So I'll, I'll I'll get there when we get there. But the yeah, um, yeah. so I think that what we're seeing happen to that space is that it's being, you know, um, one it's, you know, when when Zach joins, um, you know, he's kind of in the same space. He gets divided off before they can, you know, do anything really interesting, um, yeah. and he goes into quote unquote his mental place. I think his wow. mental place is that church. And that's what okay. the. That's what we're looking at, and but before you know, uh, after he he defeats him, he's you know like, I guess this is it. Goodbye, you know like he's, he's got the meteor coming. Lost hope. Yeah, yeah, like 
Oh, We're God. done. But then, but then the same white portal opens, the same rainbowy white portal opens, and then he falls through. And he's like, well, okay, here we go. You know, so for me, that's what we're seeing there. And then when Aerith shows up in the yeah, same mental the space, changes completely. the environment is covered with yeah. what? Water. It's covered with water. The water's surface, the which is the water. most, the most Aerith coded shit you could possibly have. And well, so the whole children coded shit as well. Or... It's and it's it's also like her purifying his mind so we're in cloud's yeah. mind you know in my yeah. mind it definitely fits with that as well I yeah mean, they use the same imagery that yeah. they use in the ending of the og and they've done it twice now at the end of remake and at the end of rebirth so it has to be yeah it just makes sense and so to me the, the who i think we're talking to is we're talking live stream Aerith or omni Aerith, yeah. who's you know the yeah. same Aerith that's been from the future this whole time you know like the one that was in the chapter 14 resolution scene and remake so was, she as soon as they established that to us that it was a yeah Aerith with memories closest to the future that was it i was sold on yeah that. this Let is everything sephiroth running a proxy war that's right we're fucked. <laughs> that's right and so we so when she shows up you know one of the things she says is first of all she shows up like in a in like a just this white rainbowy white whisper white whispers show up first and then the flowers come out of it as well i'm sure we get some flowers that come out of it that's as well. in but i know what you mean yeah but that that's more that's more in the um we see that more in actually zach's uh a little mm. mental battlefield thing where every now and then this this healing rainbowy flower thing pops up um and so it's like the protection ward isn't it it is Especially kind of cat. yeah it, it looks like ward, yeah, it's, yeah it's a it's a ward yeah um has a, a, a boosting status effect and um yeah. Uh, when she walks up, she says, I saw what you did back there, you know, and, uh, you know, talking about at least in, you know, whatever variant, whether it's internal, but whatever it is, you know, um, whether it's an is illusion, trunk off? <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, you know, she acknowledges it because they think that, you know, internally, you know, it's a, it's something that she provided, but yeah. regardless, once she's there, she's healed the space and so it's representative of her doing something that contra indicates the genovification of him so it's how yeah. he's dodging the how how he's not turning into a robe is because of this thing that Aerith is doing like the mechanics that can be argued about and it have different interpretations and i think that's fine um that's the way that i read that uh then we get Maybe. out yeah First of all, great fight too. I loved, I loved so that good. fight. I loved so that good. fight. Um, so then we I love get that out. Final phase that yeah. he comes to, where he just decimates you if you're not. You've got to save Planet Protector for that realistically. Like I had to at yeah, least. I, I, um, <laughs> for me, I had, um, I. Had, Did you have a big hit to take him down? Pretty much straight away. I just, I just used finishing touch as soon as we got to the third phase, uh, and and it killed him. So, um, and it's also got a ton of iframes, so you're. You're like kind of set. Um, uh, so then we get out, you know, and then battle's over, right? And now yeah. we're in this really weird space. Like, it's clear that we've missed, we've missed the the body lowering, you know. Now, mm. so so tell me what your thoughts are when we get out of the battle. Very very confused at this point. We're still <laughs> seeing the two realities. That cloud scene. Well, we're not. We're, no, not that cloud scene. We're seeing the reality that everyone else is seeing, and the reality that cloud seeing. And it's just, it's eerie. It's super eerie, man. That moment when we're sat next to the water and Aerith appears next to him, and her face is completely shadowed, dark. And the music, even, it does that thing where it drops a key in the note and hangs for a second to create that eerie kind of feeling in the music. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to convey in that moment. I have seen certain theories from certain massive theory crafters, and I don't necessarily agree with it. Sure. But there is definitely something not right about that scene at the water's edge. A hundred percent. They're trying to convey some sort of 
like horror-based undertone to it. Like, mm-hmm. the definitely trying to them. And I would argue that it's the state of Cloud Psyche that they're trying to convey is a problem here. Yeah. Because he's not accepting it. Whether or not there is an alternate world where, you know, whether he's right to not accept it or not, he's not accepting it. And it's just distancing him from reality even further than he already has been by Sephiroth. And I, I think that might be what they're trying to convey potentially in that mm. moment. Because then mm. when we get to the final, final scene, that eeriness kind of goes away a little bit from Aerith, in my opinion. I don't think there's that much eeriness to Aerith in the final, final scene. But that one next to the water's edge, and that's a problem. That's definitely suggestive of a few things. Or it's suggestive that something is definitely not right. And I mean, obviously, something's definitely not right. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, cloud, cloud's broken at this point. So it all hinges on whether or not he's actually seeing something because he can perceive the world now because he's traveled the world. I think that's very much what it feeds into in the same way that people can't perceive the whispers until they've interacted with the whispers or they are of a certain, like Rufus is of a certain level of importance to the fate of the planet that he can see them. I think maybe the world is a similar thing. Like until you've actually traveled them, you don't see shit. Mm. But once you have, mm. you can perceive them. Right. Right. So I get that's what made, and I didn't think that until the very last shot where Cloud looks up. Okay. That's what really made me think that. That kind of solidified that as a strong possibility for me. Okay. And we will get to the final yeah, CG yeah, yeah. ending. The next scene is Glenn and Rufus. I mean, what is Glenn at this point? What's what's left of Glenn at this point? That's that's what the question becomes for me. Obviously, there's a consciousness of some sort there. But is it a fabrication from Sephiroth again? As it seems to be when we see the Black Cloak and Glenn and Sephiroth kind of flicker in between each other and you hear uh-huh. both of their voices at the same time. Is this just another Sephiroth illusion? Or has something gone on between Glenn and Sephiroth? And I mean, we've obviously got the first soldier stuff. I mean, I guess they're going to hit us with some stuff in that over the course of the next few months, years, whatever it may be. I thought it was wild that they actually, like, kind of spoiled Glenn's fate in the game. Because, like, we don't know Rufus shoots Glenn in the back until this game. Yeah, he just flat out says <laughs> it, like, just like, just like it used to be, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so... Uh, well, then what is Glenn at that point? Has Glenn become a consciousness that's strong enough to, in the same way that Sephiroth's able to persist? after I, the events of Nibelheim. I Has think, Glenn become something akin to that? I think the takeaway that I I felt like you were supposed to have was... Sephiroth's distracting Shinra. Is, is, yeah. is Sephiroth is just using Glenn as a, as a, you know, in the same way that Genova He's running into uses, yeah. uses your loved ones. Like, we know that Viceroy Saruf is just Rufus. Um, yeah. so that's, that's like... Recycled before Crisis lore, mixed with, um, you know, this new Ever Crisis stuff. Um, yeah. But the, we also know that, like, from the first Soldier chapters of Ever Crisis, that Everoth and Glenn kind of close. They're, it's kind yeah. of like a. It starts a bit sketchy. Yeah, and and so it's but like they become very close by chapters. By the end of chapter six, it's like he's one yeah. of the boys. And he's we turning know. He's turning his back on and coming to help. Exactly, and we know that. We know that they fight at some point because the From intro movie yeah. is is Glenn and Sephiroth fighting, but um, it feels like you know like the most basic read is that Sephiroth is trying to destabilize the planet. He resents Rufus for killing his friend, and so is appearing as his friend to sort of you know. Um, create instability and also highlight to Rufus that he knows the truth about him. He knows he's playing yeah. two sides. Like, you know, because Rufus is always going to be like a gray character, right? Like, yeah. he obviously funds Avalanche, but for selfish reasons. He probably goes to Wu Tai to like check on his Avalanche thing, gets seen by Glenn and has to kill him, you know, or something like that. Because it's in the back. Plausible, yeah. Yeah, and so um, 
you know, I, I feel like that's the basic thing, but the, uh, the, the, the elephant in the room, like the annoying question is that he uses a lot of father son talk and no, no, <laughs> stop it immediately. We're not even entertaining it as a theory. Stop it immediately. No, no. And me and you have had conversations about this way, way, way long ago. And we, I think, I, I'm going to speak for you here, but I'm pretty sure we were both of the mindset we don't want to know who Cloud's dad is. Keep it, keep it, keep it. So keep it. it's feeling Just more and it. more likely. And it's a couple so things. For the one, I thought was the promised land, the promised land. Yeah. Know? Rufus. That's what totally. I thought that was. Totally. That's fair. Well, I get that there are additional layers that you can look and kind of go, oh, but what if this and this? Totally fair. Yeah. However, there's there other go. shit. And you you went on a, a very justified media blackout. I have heard but about the preview book and the, the money. The, the money thing? Okay, that's, yep. that's, that's not a good sign. No, it's not. It really isn't. It really isn't. I personally don't... I'm still not... He probably owns... because of my own dislike of yeah. it. I'm still not willing to be like, oh yeah. So for the audience, oh, Brock. so for the audience, oh, um, in the world preview book, there's a short story about um, young Cloud joining Soldier, and uh, and a little bit more backstory is given about Blant, about <laughs> fuck, okay, uh, about Cloud's father, and it's that um, uh, that he's um, bad with money. And that he he very specifically names two thousand gil as like a as an amount of money that um, he could do a lot of damage with. So the implications yeah. maybe he's a little bit of a gambler. And the two thousand gil increment um, is one supposed to represent why Cloud like charges charges two thousand gil for shit. Two, uh, it was the like money, it was like money Cloud had. It's it, well, Glenn, like Glenn owed Glenn it. owed two thousand gil to two different people. Yeah. In in the first soldier, it was like a total of four thousand gil. Conversation that he has with Matt. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, no, but there's don't. other no. things. No. There's other no. things though. Okay, so there. Okay, there's other things here. So check this out. So this is fair. There is a there is a. Now granted, it's in one of the side quests. It's in an event quest. Glenn gets transported to Nibelheim, and he says he's never been there before. Yep. Okay. That, that was in the... Was it the Halloween event? It was the Halloween event. The Halloween he says, event, I've never yeah. seen this before. I've never been to yep. this place before. So somebody... So I, I mentioned that in NSP's chat, and somebody's like, oh, he, he might have... He, we don't know that he was in Nibelheim ever. We do. Uh, in, we do. In Traces of Two Past... He lived there for like two years. He wandered in. Um, he wandered in. We know that Cloud's dad wandered into Nibelheim like a stranger, um, and he Still was for a bit. handsome like Cloud. And um, if you think that Glenn is handsome like Cloud, agree to disagree. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and then and then he went. He like uh, when Cloud was old enough to start walking. Dude just rolls into the Nebel Mountains and like disappears. They never find a body, they just find like clothes. Right? So the only way that really works is at at 19 years old, Glenn wanders into Nebelheim, comes out two years later, abandons his child, fakes his death, and um then within a year becomes like a maximum rank P0. Yeah. Okay. And then just no, never mentions sure. it. Never mentions it to Matt and Glenn. He's super good with kids. Like he's very nice to Sephiroth, but he's like not mentioning Rosen at all. Well. Yeah, and Rosen, he's like yep. a good oh, I'm guy. So for Rosen. I'm he has so no characteristics of being a like a deadbeat dad. So the 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 only way this works. The only way this fucking works is that he went in the Nebel Mountains, got snatched up by a Hojo, had two years of his life removed, and then got injected to P Zero. That's what I was about to say is my devil's advocate thing. It could work, but it isn't gonna work because it isn't Glenn. No. They need to stop it. Like I would rather it was a young president Shimra was just visiting the, the, the Shimra mansion and just saw Claudia and was like, hey baby. 
I'd rather I that was the case. I shit you not, I would rather I'd be... Rather I would rather be that Zack is now 21 years <laughs> in the past. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close And he screen. wanders, and he <laughs> wanders into Nibelheim and puts a baby in. Ignore Claudia's age at right now. Please. There's, there's loops in the real world, because we've done this before. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I would rather that, but I think I'll, I think I would rather that than Glenn Infernus. I think I think it's not looking good. Um, but I also think it's kind of a meme. Like, um, like President Shinra ends up having like just shitloads of kids. Like every compilation title, there's a new kid that isn't Cloud. <laughs> you know. Oh, uh, I'd, I'd rather. I'd, honestly, I'd rather not. Glenn in Ever Crisis claims he's a P zero mm -hmm. that is unmodified. Yeah, all the P zeros are supposed to have no nova cells so like yeah, it's just is, not yeah this this is why i'm thinking that something's gonna go down now in chapter 7 8 and yeah. that's when he's gonna be tested upon yeah i would guess like this mana torrent that's gonna happen in Rador. rosen's gonna die everyone's gonna end up all kinds of messed up yeah and hojo is gonna go oh there's three people there matt lucia and glenn no one needs them you don't you don't need them you don't need them all right i'll take them and yeah, that's it. I, th yeah. I honestly think that's the route it goes. Yeah, but yeah. it's going to be rough on Sephiroth, a hundred percent. It's definitely going to be one of those formative things for Sephiroth, and going back to the Rufus Sephiroth Glen, Sephi Glen, Glenaroth scene. It would make sense if Sephiroth's kind of using the image of Glen, because yeah, like we know that Sephiroth was kind of stripped down to his basic memories and stuff like that when he first fell into the live stream. And those memories are kind of the things that kind of made him coherent and kept him together. If his first real friend that he ever made, yeah. judging by what happens in the first soldier, gets taken out by Rufus, then that's going to foster a massive amount of sentiment, negative sentiment yeah. in Sephiroth. And it's going to be something he remembers. And he's already so, kind of like fucking tuned out, man. And like in the Wu Tai War, he's like kind of checked out. So, yeah. like, he's calling Genesis, like, Yo, Bay, uh, I'm freaking <laughs> out, and then and then Glenn shows up, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm looking there's, forward to that scene. I am too. I'm such a such a such a like addict for more weird lore in that that segment of time. Especially anything that pertains to Sephiroth as well. Why like, it's just we need to know because. Like that moment in the Shinra Manor where he learns about what he is and everything like that, yeah. that's going to mess a guy up 100%. But there's got to be a lot of additional stuff that's built up to that point as well. Totally. Especially with the life he lives. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It makes sense that they're weaving stuff like that in. And it would make sense if he is, like I say, using Glenn's image. Yeah. It would make sense. Um, it's, very it's very Genova I'm looking forward to the whole I thing. Because, I mean, we get Matt and Lucia mentioned as well, don't we? Yeah. As these two generals, as Glenn's like two right, left and right hands. So yeah, I can't wait to get to Wu Tai and see what's actually going on there because it sounds like it could be pretty dark. Oh man, yeah. There's so many cool, yeah. Um, okay. So uh, doing the FMV. Yeah. Well, what was your take? What the fuck happened? First of all, they just to like reiterate the scene again and then let you respond to it. Um. Like, you know, they're outside. Uh, Aerith is still there um, to Cloud only, with one weird exception, which is that when she comes over and touches Red 13, he senses it a little bit. It says Aerith. He doesn't say, like, oh, this ain't Genova. He says Aerith. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, oh, they have, no. they have, they have conversation. Uh, there's also the, um, there's also the the like straight up sorcerer stone scene where where like where Cloud Harry Potter just reaches into his pocket and he just all of a sudden got the oh, black hello. materia and then he fucking jams it into his sword. Um uh and then you know that happens. Uh so alright, let's go and then Cloud looks up and then there's the thing in the sky. So tell me your takes here on that. So oh. This feels different to the Aerith that we see outside the temple with Cloud. So you know the one that I was saying a minute ago, it feels airy, it feels weird. Yeah. This doesn't, this feels like Aerith died, but she's kind of just looking around and just kind of 
checking out her friends, making sure they're yeah. okay, kind of seeing them off kind of thing. I've got a weird feeling that she's tied to the temple because of Holy Materia, and that's why she doesn't go with in that instant. But I guarantee that Cloud will see Aerith a lot in part three. Because I do think Cloud is carrying some weird version of Aerith with him. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a bad thing, but I don't know how bad of a thing it is. So, like, Aerith, I think Aerith's there, and I think that's why Red perceives Aerith. Because she is actually there, and kind of her spirit, she's just kind of watching over him a little bit. But then the weirdness is with Cloud for me. All of the weirdness in that scene is with Cloud. First off, the fact that he's still got the hollow white materia. Then he puts that in his pocket and pulls out a fully charged black materia. Yeah. Is what it seems like. Then pops that into his sword. Oh, and that, that, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. I'm not going to lie. It was like very Yeah, cool. I like the effect. Yeah, I was a fan of that. I was a fan of that. But then when he looks up, and like I was saying, because he's traversed the worlds, he can perceive the worlds. And when, as we've kind of already had established with Zack's world, the, the, the world that Aerith created, that's kind of a harbinger of a world merging or the destruction of a world one or the other like well i mean merging is the destruction of both worlds technically isn't it the kind of something new ends up created from that i'd guess so the fact that he can see that's very unnerving to me the fact that i mean it makes sense that he's got the black materia because the way that he gets the black materia in the og is pretty weird you know like sephiroth just kind of comes along and gives it back to him like there you go bring me that like it, that was kind of weird so it's interesting that he's got it whether or not it's real or not is a question as well and is it symbolic is it not the actual black material? Is it more symbolic of Sephiroth's will and kind of the urge for reunion? Is it his mind kind of seeing a reason to go north or something like that? But then you've got the Aerith scene where I get why people are saying she's a bit weird because she has that moment where she kind of stops and looks away and she almost winces, doesn't she, when she's talking to him? But I yeah. feel like that's in reaction to how Cloud's being. I think she can tell that Cloud's not right and that she didn't do enough. That's the feeling that I got from that scene, that Aerith knows that she did a lot, but it yeah. wasn't enough, and she's yeah. worried now, because yeah. she can't go with Cloud, because she's tied here with Hola. I agree, and um, I, I fully agree. So, um, I'm just so that I, I kind of, um, I know that there is a prevailing, not prevailing, but one of the, one of the interpretations of both the ending cinematic and this the creepy scene by the stairs is that we're Aerith is just Genova here. Yeah. And um Geno which would fit with Genova, I get why people are saying it. There's a couple reasons why I don't think that's that's what's going on. Um yeah. one, what I think it really is, is is uh I think it's livestream Aerith, uh who recognizes that Cloud is not in a position to um accept the truth yet uh yeah. otherwise he'll turn into a robe um yeah i think there's a lot of context that supports that basic premise regardless of the mechanics or whether ultimately it means that she's going to live or die i think that's what's what's being conveyed um the the red 13 detail is a is a very big one uh and would would like it's it's big enough that it would feel like a too much of a betrayal of the conveyance of information for it to be Genova. But also, yeah. um, the the game actually does make a point of highlighting what specifically looks like when Genova is emulating another person. Like it's it goes out of its way to give you visual effects, and where it does this pretty clearly is the scene immediately before, which with Glenn. Where we see what it looks yes. like for Sephiroth to take the appearance of of something. So for them to just like give us all of this visual language saying this is what Genova can do. This is what it's like when Genova is controlling somebody or something like not just here, but in like the Queen's Blood stuff, all of it, uh, all of the times that we see illusory stuff, um, we're getting this clear visual language and for them to betray that and say, well, you know, this is an upgraded version of it. She's even more in control now. How do we, how does that work? Oh, well now there's no visual effects. That's, that's, I, 
Maybe I'm being too I think charitable. The Red interaction is the nail in the coffin yeah. for that, in my opinion. Yeah. For, not only just for like the Genova area thing, but also like in my mind, it kind of stops it being a, a Sephiroth illusion as well because like at the end of chapter 13 that yeah. i'm not so sure about the edge of the water i'm yeah. not so sure about that i think that could maybe be a set of yeah. illusion or yeah. clouds broken psyche or a combination of the, the yeah that one i era. that one i really get i i do get that I, I i feel that vibe but the actual ending cinematic yeah. it's also just the goodbye it's like very clearly the goodbye like it's the the last frame no promises to keep is playing after she's just made him promise yeah and yeah and then and then also like she says you know um i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop meteor and she doesn't get on the plane with him you know like i don't like i feel like if it were genova it would just she would get on the plane with him he's sat in like, the seat next to cloud like everything's fine let's go yeah absolutely so yeah, i think that's what he'd see yeah, I think that's really um I, I it would be such a bizarre betrayal of all of these mechanics, visual language that they tried really hard Everything to establish. Yeah. And so that's that's over an overuse of a red herring. That's when like a red herring isn't good anymore. And I just have maybe just too, maybe it's too charitable of a view of the storytelling in the game. Um but I don't think so. I think they're pretty consistent with visual language. Yep. You know, so it's one I, of the things that they use yeah, them, if you yeah. think about it. Like that's yeah. how they convey a lot of things. Yeah. So, like live stream wisps. Yeah. Those little green live stream particles that we see a lot of the time. Like there's so many different things they use. So to abandon that in that moment, especially in a scene where they're using another one of them, would be ludicrous. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they go from showing Gleneroth using the purple smoke and all of the really clear Genova illusion visual language yep. to not using that language in the very next scene. They're well, bad at this. In that same scene, yeah. you've got the <laughs> visual language for the merging of the worlds above. I have, so the, yeah. the continuing, well, whatever it is, yeah. the visual, it's, it's a visual representation of something. I think it means that the world is marked for death, um, personally, like, so okay. one of the things that um, that I, I pointed I've pointed out a couple times is that line the the line that divides does match the visual language of this yellow line that takes place in the clouds mind segments in the OG um, like in the live stream sequence um, I will I yeah. will DM you the yeah, yeah. I think uh, I know what you mean I think I'm gonna DM you the pictures I, I and I'll uh, if you're watching at home all all intercut it under the video so oh yeah bloody hell yeah it's pretty it's pretty messy very it's similar pretty similar. very similar so um so and also like the the storyboards in the ultimania did say that the yellow flower looking universe was the universe of death of all things it was weird but it uses the same kind of color spectrum and again that is a thing that we see like in cloud's mind right yeah. So uh, that's not to say that it doesn't represent a new world. It might represent that, but I think it also very clearly is meant to convey visual language that says this universe or this world is now marked for death. And I think that this is indicative of a false narrative and the journey of unlocking Cloud's mind. You know, so that's that's what I think are the meanings that you take away from that 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 line in the sky um so i am personally not in the in the Aerith is actually Genova. alive in a real way i think she is now okay. she is now just the maiden and that yep. what she did in the water altar was damage control she realized that what she needed to do was provide cloud with a a delusion that he was successful so he didn't fall into despair which is why cloud says or why sephiroth says to her not cloud says to to, to Aerith, i underestimated you when she walks in so i am not in the she's alive in another world and um and and cloud is experiencing two worlds camp quite yet or at all um but 
I do also see like why people think that and think there's probably like more details and interpretation that support that than yeah. I've noticed personally. And so that's why I'm kind of leaning towards this other way. So what what are your thoughts? Like you mentioned that you think that, you know, we've got kind of a Schrodinger's Aerith where she's kind of alive and dead. What do you think? What do you think is going on? So the I underestimated you, Aerith, I say is the future Aerith. Right, that's I that agree. I, I agree. That's that Aerith. I agree. I think the reason that he underestimated her though is because yep. he subverted his speech to a uh, speech yep. and despair thing to he subvert she subverted his push like the yep. push was undone by this counter move yeah which is pretty consistent with sephiroth and Aerith in yeah. general he has underestimated her a fair few times going forwards in the story and she does keep just popping up and going no stop it but for me I think I, I am in the two worlds potentially at the minute, but if there is a second world that's been created where Aerith is alive, we've already had it well established to us that these worlds don't last long. Like, granted, they can last for varying lengths of time, but they don't last long. They all diminish eventually. So any kind of Aerith survival would be a temporary Aerith survival in my mind. And it kind of becomes a case of if it is just something for Cloud to peek on, peek in on and see in order to maintain his psyche, then it could just be within his psyche anyway. You wouldn't be able to differentiate between the two really at this point. So I'm kind of with you on that 50-50 mm -hmm. of the way. But when it comes to the line in the sky in the FMV, I, I kind of think what you're saying is a strong possibility. I, I, I agree with a lot of the things that you've said in it and it is a strong possibility, but I cannot shake this feeling that thinking back to the worlds will diminish eventually and all these worlds are doomed eventually. What if we've been in a doomed world from the start? Okay. And we are now seeing, as you've said, the destruction of this world impending because it's running its course. Right. So whatever's happened at the start of Remake or prior to Remake, whether it's Sephiroth, whether it's Aerith, whether it's something else completely unrelated, something's created this Remake offshoot universe this world that's why we've got a future air it's consciousness interacting with it because all those events have already happened granted yeah. time being a flat circle and all that you know what i mean but <laughs> like these events have potentially already happened so you've got these future consciousnesses of sephiroth and Aerith doing battle over this new world and then the events that have happened within that world have again created things i feel like it's a way for them to play it safe in a lot of ways and remake the game with changes but then it doesn't matter at the end. And I know a lot of people would hate that because it's like, well, then it doesn't matter. But it does. I, I think the journey and the experience would be the thing that's mattered. The, the thing that matters, do you know what I mean? Not so much the end result of the world, more so the events that happen within it. And I'm sure it could have some bearing. Again, this is completely crackpot theory mode that I'm going into here. But it's just something that I've not been able to shake. After even with remake, I felt like it was potentially an offshoot of the original game. Something's happened and created mm. a branch, and seeing that in the sky just immediately made. After we've seen a world that was doomed for destruction already with something similar in the sky, that, that's just where I was at. It, it just put me right there. So yeah, I agree that it's doomed for destruction. But I mean, it's like so, in the context of it being doomed for destruction from your perspective, what exists after that? would you say i think the reason that, it, that it's marked for death is because um it's it's like a it's a sort of like a kind of emanatory response to the black materia being cast yeah so, so it's I, like a harbinger of like this is happening yeah. so i'm gonna get ready <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i thing. that that's the way that i'm i'm seeing it i'm seeing it more and more that it really the that the the game seemed to kind of split the difference between you know all of the all of the new and the old and so i, yep. I do really feel like it's uh it's gonna be it's it's really really nailing down the center of these two extremes and so i i don't i know i i feel confident and comfortable with saying that there are time travelish elements enough that most people's conception where they call it a sequel 
is is going to feel validated like validated yep. enough i still you and i have had this conversation i still don't feel like that the the term is i've come more to your side of things that it's both i have come yeah. slightly more to your side of things that it's both i, I mean I, I feel the fact that it is a sequel stops it being a remake but it is a remake because you're doing all of the things I, so i i think yeah i think the implication is more that like there is that this is the real one world this is not we are not in a dream world we're not in a we're not in an offshoot this, this is, is the og world for you this yeah. is this is the world of final fantasy 7. yeah um and uh it's on, undergone some adaptations based on both lore reasons and production reasons i think there will be ex there will be some changes that was just like that's how games are now and also it's 2024 we can't yeah, yeah. do we're, the same we're, we're shit very far removed yeah we from can't the original. we can't yeah. be that homophobic anymore etc you know like <laughs> there's that kind of stuff those kind of changes for sure also there's structural changes like i don't think there will ever be a in universe explanation for why the temple of the ancients is in the northern continent now i think they were like, huh, how did Aerith get there? How did Aerith get to the forgotten capital when like the OJ, yeah. when like there are no boats and the only boat is a crashed plane that like is apparently so scarce that that Rufus needs to steal it from you when there's airplanes yeah, exactly. everywhere, you know, like so like you know Yeah, there was very much two types of changes that they've been yeah. the this has to be changed because yeah what and, you want about and exactly then there's choice changes yeah yeah i i really do uh i think that there are gonna be some that are like oh these are nods and then some that are like meta nods they're just like love letter to the to the original yeah. sort of stuff like i hate to bring this up but i don't think we're gonna get an in-universe explanation for like the save crystal dialogue being written on the Johnny poster for it, or like the um, I love uh, that. I was so happy when I got a save crystal. And yeah, that's very. It was very cool. I was worried it was going to glitch my file, but everything's fine. That OG humor, or like uh, oh. you know, or the the, the Shinra Manor and the save code, like you know, like it's not going to be that they're going to try and sell that to us as a uh, you know, oh, that's because this is the divergent universe from the og i don't think they're gonna say that but i do yeah. think they're gonna say that um you know the omni omnitemporal nature of, the, of things does give like advent children elements of the lore you know power like sephiroth that we're talking to does have knowledge from that portion of the future and that this is a timeless battle and um between these two forces of cosmos and chaos you know i do think that that's going to be at play for sure yeah 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 um oh, it's, it's, it's a mega like they've somehow left us with a lot more questions than we had after remake and kept it all interesting like none of it feels like fluff really everything feels like it's going to do you know what i mean nothing feels like it's going to be a dead end it all feels like it's going to come to something that, yeah. That's where I'm kind of at at the minute, and I'm looking forward to just picking it apart over the next three, four years. So, speaking of the future, Ooh. what do we, what are we thinking for part three? What's okay? First of all, what's your thought on a title? I mean, Reunion's still way up there for me. I know they've already used it with Crisis Core, but come on, it feels like the perfect title, especially with all the reunion of worlds, the actual reunion with Genova happening and things like that. Sephiroth at one point tells Cloud to fill his heart with hate, with malice and with regret. And it kind of focuses on his face and hangs on it for a second as he says regret. I feel like that'd be a bit of a dour title though. Be like so be good. I good. love regret so bad, but there's no way it's- Fantasy seven regret, but it won't be. It's it's a little unmarketable because it's a yeah. memeable joke, but I love it like from a conceptual. Yeah, like, it yeah. feels like it would make sense, especially with that scene. Yeah, between Sephiroth and Cloud, I, it just feels like it would work, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't work. Regenerate? No, not doing it. Uh, reunion feels strong. 
I know. Reunion. I know. Reunion. I know reunion was used, and so like people are saying that it's probably not something that they can use. I kind of agree that they would be real weird if they did it. They blew their load with Crisis Core. Um. Uh, I know that you think that they could still use it, but uh, I feel like they can. Genuinely, I feel that they can. I feel like they have to almost. Well, you know, uh, the one that right. that came to me during the the end game was mm. reunite, because it's conceptually the same and it's a thing that's X says. I'm like yeah, kind of the yeah. It is yeah. another thing that's so like there. there's a thing. So reunite is like also like an action word. Um, it doesn't fit the. Um, it's, it's got too many syllables. It doesn't. It's matter. so yeah. That's another thing. There's there's the <laughs> syllable thing. So like the things that work with remake. There you go three syllables. And <laughs> so remake and rebirth are both like, um, they're like if you take the re part away, they're an, they're a verb, you know, like, mm -hmm. and they're both um, two syllables. They both start with re. Um, so it does make you feel like the part three is going to do the same thing. Return is one that uh, I was leaning to toward before before this. I still think Return and Reunite are like my the ones that I think will are like kind of likely and marketable. Yeah, but the I, I don't know, man. Reunion feels good for me, but I get why. It's three. It's also it, it it's also perfect. three syllables. I know, I know, I've fought the rules. It just feels perfect, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It really does. All right. I think about the reunion of worlds, the reunion of Genova, the potential reunion of like Zach and Aerith, the potential mm -hmm. reunion of Cloud and Aerith, mm -hmm. the reunion of Cloud mm -hmm. with his sanity at some point, hopefully. Yeah. Do you know, there's so many, but they've used it. So I'm yeah. scared that they won't. My favorite is Repent. Um. And again, I don't think it's marketable, but no. uh, for me, I love Repent as like a it just it seems really thematic of like, you know, every the party, the party's, you know, past sins, uh, the the humanity's uh, you know, damage to the planet, uh, the Cetra's failure to stop Genova, Cloud's failure to save Aerith. Yeah. Um, there's a lot yeah. of things that have gone wrong for people that they're feeling very guilty about in world. It's 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 um, it's also like the language is very Abrahamic, right? And so like the the mm. the, the coding is very Sephiroth, you know, like the Sephiroth yeah. is a Abrahamic religion thing. And so, not that repentance isn't a thing that happens in multiple faiths. I'm not saying that, but it does have a there is an association, you know, to to say the least. Um, Rejoin? No. Yeah, return to the planet is like you know that that makes a lot of sense, but also kind of. Uh, here's here's one prediction. It'd be I a have. mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> one prediction I have is that whatever title they use will 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 on its face give one side hope or the other, but in reality not deliver on said thing so let's say they name it revive Aerith, <laughs> Aerith will not survive if they name no. it like if they name it something that's mournful or you know loss oriented she's coming back like i do believe that th whatever they do will like be the opposite will the happen, opposite yeah. Will happen. yeah if they, <laughs> if they do something like that yeah I don't, so I'm, I'm viewing it from the perspective of she's already dead okay so like you... we kind of need to cloud needs to accept that but yeah. narratively she will still be present because she does feel like this omnipresent consciousness within the live stream yeah and we didn't see her final her and break. Sephiroth, just both of them yeah like, th that's what it feels like at this point yeah because pretty much all of the compilation post ff7 of course is their struggle so much, but, uh, there's some good questions and i will i will get to those I just want you to sort of so okay. Do you think Aerith's physical body will come back in part three for you? I doubt it. I mean, I okay. think it's possible. I think they could do it, but I don't yeah. think they will. What about Zach? I don't think they will. Big same. So you think? So okay. 
that doesn't mean I don't think we'll be able to maybe control them and run around with them. See, it all depends on what these worlds are. Sure. Whether they're corporeal yeah. or non-corporeal. Like, that's kind of what it boils down to. Do you, are you worried that if, say, the the, the link-up to Advent Children is literally lead instead of link? Like, and it does have... That's, like, the only real valid meaning. Do you think that all of the subversion and all of that stuff may be under-delivers? I mean, if it leads directly into Advent Children, as in, this finishes, Advent Children will be the next plot beat, that would feel very weird based on everything that's happened in Remake mm -hmm. and Rebirth. Because I feel like there's been that much stuff layered on top. I don't think I can see a world where we just directly flow into the exact same good old Advent Children. It, it feels like we've already tread a lot of the ground from Advent Children in Rebirth and Remake. Mm -hmm. So that would feel like we were just retreading old ground again. I'm very much of the mindset that Link up to Advent Children is more of the thing and it kind of reinforces the belief that this is maybe a post-Advent Children Sephiroth and that will be the Link up. It's Sephiroth after his defeat by Cloud, yeah. after the purging of the live stream by Aerith. And something's happened. It could even be the end of Dirge or something triggers it. Like, I, I don't know. Sure, I'm I, not too sure. Actually, I think that's the end of Dirge stuff is really. Yeah, uh, because really... there's a lot that goes on in a massive. Like, it's not minor scale, it's yeah. big planetary scale shit that goes down at the end yeah. of Dirge. Yeah. So. And it'd be a good opportunity for us to get more characterization from Vincent, too, in part three, and maybe if there's any DLC. And they've already worked Dirge in, so they're obviously, you know, conscious and welcoming of Dirge in the remake Rebirth storyline. We didn't get as much of it in Rebirth, but oh my god, Yuffie's trial, man. But yeah, and, and, like, yeah, I mean, if we get DLC, like, there's no way we're not going to fight Genesis. Think? Oh, what, do I think what we're do getting think? DLC? Oh, well, yeah, yeah we're getting I, DLC. You think we're going to get one? Every time any developer has ever said hey uh, no there's no dlc, no DLC. that means th what they actually mean is dlc has been in development for a year and it's coming out like that's what that means dude like even 16 16 like they oh, had doors obvious, though. So they had as doors that leviathan went nowhere in the game. yeah no, as soon as leviathan yeah. was yeah. the game's out well there's dlc yeah. in there. come on yeah <laughs> yeah so i i would be really surprised if there's not dlc um so okay and, and so as far as character fates go, I am fairly comfortable and confident that, uh, you know, as, as much as you can be in any situation where nobody knows yeah. anything. Um, <laughs> so like, you know, 20% certainty that, um, you know, that Aerith is gone. We're not going to yeah. see a physically alive Aerith and that all of this is meant to sort of um, uh, serve Cloud's mental journey. Yes. Uh, and, you know, I do even think that like, Somewhere in the live stream sequence, maybe after, uh, you know, we're going to see elements of what really happened with Aerith. Like, we'll yeah. see the full maybe scene. Maybe then we'll see the lowering yeah. into the water and all that sort of stuff. Because it's ma it was insane that it wasn't there. I do think that's that's what's going on there. Sure. Zach, however, I'm not sure. I'm not certain oh. that, that, the, that Zach is... Because whatever world he's in, when he says, you know, he threatens to reunite the worlds. Yep. You know, so he, he's and also like he's in this world that my OK, my very first read is he doesn't know that he's in the he's in the real world. The reason he says I can bring him together again. He, he's saying that because he thinks he's in this different world because he just walked into flowers a church that Aerith again. wasn't in. And previously when he was in the church, the flowers were dead. The flowers are alive. I think I, my read is that he's it's in possible. the prime timeline. That would be impressive if Aerith managed to just eat him into the prime timeline. Yeah, I, that, is that is that is my read. I am not, I'm less confident on that by a mile. I will mm. also say too that I have some, some biases on this, right? I, I think that I am, I, and I'm trying to fight this as much as possible, but yeah, I've got to be honest with people, yeah, that, yeah. you know, here that I, 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 and personally of the kind of mindset that the only way for the subversion of all of this to really pay off is if there's some consequentiality to it. And I don't think that the only consequentiality that could possibly deliver is new character fates. I'm 
I, I get that. I, I, I will say that it's it strains plausibility for me that that is true, but I I know that I'm not the the only writer in the world, and I know that the devs have surprised me before with with creative stuff. However, I, I still I still think this is true for me that the worst two possible things that could happen to the story are both Zack and Aerith die. Or both okay. Zack and Aerith live. Those are okay. the two two possible things. I think the only thing that delivers perfectly is one of them lives. And I personally don't care which one lives. And, but given what you've just said, that does make sense. I didn't actually consider that she'd pushed him into the prime timeline. It's just, well, so... I didn't, and that makes sense now that I'm thinking about it and seeing the scene. It's be, because it's the nature of the white portal thing. It really seems yeah. to be... seems like... That's what Aerith can do. She can move you in between interlude in worlds, you know, yeah. or the interlude world and out. And the reality, yeah. And so I think he's now in reality. And um that's uh and if he ends up not being, I'm I'm kind of okay with that and I understand why people really, really don't want that. Like I get it, sacred, blah blah blah, don't subvert, blah blah blah. Artistically conservative, blah, 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 uncreative swine, gotcha. But, um, so the, the, I think the one, I think the, the reunited and death thing is boring and it's been done. It's been done a lot. I, I it. think it's, I mean, in FF7, it's been done. And we've I also the think, we've had the Zach and Aerith thing. yeah, and I also think like, that like that there's just this functional afterlife that everybody like that's functionally the same as the as life and zach and Aerith get there happily ever after is like less it's it's honestly more disrespectful to loss than otherwise like I, let's be real as well going off the mechanics of the universe yeah zach could just dissolve yeah his consciousness would not I, well i very much doubt his consciousness right. would persist within the live stream so just mechanically it feels a bit weird it's weird that they like all of a sudden advent children there's just like these two force ghosts together like it yeah i didn't like it i never you liked it where it's protecting his consciousness sure maybe, but and it yeah it feels weird and they it can write it leaps. they can write it however they want okay we get yeah. this layout and um and that's not to say that i don't think like oh uh, they love each other or that's uh, i just think it's more interesting for zach's character if he lives in earth dies <laughs> It would be because, <laughs> and, and if you think about it as well, we've sent a few characters back to Midgar. Yeah. Maybe that's just fattening Midgar up for part three, so yeah. that when Zack realizes that he is in the prime timeline, the real world, maybe maybe we see him step out of the church, look up at the sky, and sees the same line that Zack uh, Cloud sees rather yeah. than the circular one that he sees in. Yeah. Because it's more of a circle in now the prelude world isn't it? yeah it is kind of yeah uh, but you could you could fortunately just chalk that up to like uh one is visual works so cg yeah. made oh yeah yeah one is yeah. cg and one so the they don't share assets fucking ever i don't know why <laughs> well, they... that's why we've got various different crosses in god the don't get me started on that <laughs> um yeah and why we well, have red specs and stuff though. yeah that is a super interesting point about zach that um, being said like though that. That being said, though, if if like you threw a gun to my head, it's probably it's. I think the the it comes um, down to what they're gonna do. Are they gonna yeah. link it up to AC directly? Is it gonna yeah. go into AC? Because if it is, it has to. It basically becomes filler anime at that point, and it has to go back to the state that yeah. it would have been at at the end. Yeah, and I think people. I think I think if you were to like put a gun to the head of the audience, I think. More people are artistically conservative in this regard, and they would just want yeah. it to go back to normal, so that their sacred thing is is there. See, and I get I that. Get that. I mean, I do, but I don't. I, I I get why they want that. I'm not wired that way. I'm not wired my, that way. My, my 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 precious is right there. Yeah, and it'll always be that. Yeah, and I. That's yeah. never going to change. That's you know true. What I mean? That's true. So I'm kind of down with them just going for it. I, 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 we've had, we had this conversation. Yeah. We had this conversation prior. I'm ready for them to just fucking come at me with whatever they've got. Just do it. I, I agreed. And and but that being said, they are taking fan feedback. And I have a feeling if yeah. you were to take, put a gun to my head and say what's going to happen, I'd be like it's probably they're probably going to like 
they gave themselves enough room that they can yeah. just like have it totally not they diverge at all. At yeah, I hope though that like enough people say, "Hey, like we just want do you it. to do what you want and not Hell necessarily what we right. want." You've 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 like split the difference so far with part two. You've found a really good middle ground. Keep that pace up, but like take a big swing at the end. That's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of where yeah, I'm at with it. Let's yeah. think about it. They're all getting on a bit, and I hate to talk like this, but this is probably their last massive project together as a group. Yeah, they're old as shit, man. So <laughs> I want them to just just go for it, man. Just be the creative geniuses that they've been for the last 20, 30 years. Just do it. Give yeah. us what you want. And if what they want to give us is that, and it just leads into AC as normal, but if they've got other ideas, I want them to just do it. I think that would be more fun for everybody at this point. Agreed. I, I was I was one of those people that was down for a near one-for-one -one remake. Obviously, like you were saying earlier, yeah. the changes that had to be made had to be made. Right. And they would have been understandable. Right. But I was very much down for the old one-for-one. -one. But now that we're not getting that, I'm very, very much down for what we are getting now. I, I just kind of want them to do their thing. Yeah. Because, like, look how many amazing games they've given us over the decades. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just put faith in them. Let them do yeah. it. Yeah. I fully agree. That's my mindset. Because they've smashed it with Rebirth. They did. Absolutely smashed it. Yeah. I'm fully with you. Hell yeah. Um, okay, so we've got some we've got some cool audience questions, and then we'll call it. Um, so how long have we been going? Oh, nice. Yeah, we've been. Yeah, we've got a good good streak going. Three hours ish. Yeah, oh, I like it. I like it. Um, we have a question from Erdix. Uh, my dream intro to Oak to to part three will be forever be a flashback chapter playing as Asetra, living through the last day before the fall, leading up to Genova's sealing by Shiva. Do you have a dream opening sequence for part three? Well, Erdix, my answer is now that. That sounds fucking awesome. I love that. Um, I probably should come up with my own, but like, that's really good. Do you have one? So initially, before we talked about this yeah. on this stream, my thinking was, and obviously after talking about it, we were talking about how Cloud would see the true events after the live stream. But I kind of want Cloud and the party making the journey to the North Crater for that opening chapter and flashes of what actually happened just popping into Cloud's mind every now mm -hmm. and again and just breaking him and breaking him and breaking him as we get closer to that encounter with Sephiroth. That's kind of what I've got envisioned for chapter one. But that would also be very cool. Yeah. The Setra flashback. I, I kind of feel like we're not going to get it. And I'm sorry to poo-poo on your dreams and hopes there. I apologize. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've just got a weird feeling they're not going to go that deep into it. But it would be amazing. Yeah. Be super up to it. The other thing that I think we could maybe get is something Wutai related and Glenn related. You know, just open with something weird and new and then bring us back to Cloud. But no, I, I think Cloud gradually breaking as he gets closer to the crater. I think that could be it. I think that the, the prelude of Rebirth went insanely hard um and i it could be peppered by my experience which was that i went to a preview event and they let me play chapter one and most of two and so when i started the game up and a prelude played before it and you were controlling zach and eris was there i was like what the fuck this is awesome i loved that so yeah, it was pretty I crazy. do really like the idea of like having a disconnected prelude of some form. Yeah. The the flashback thing's really good, like the Cetra thing. Um, but other than that, like I do get a sense that we're gonna be in the same kind of vein where it's like maybe we're controlling Aerith in you know in her live stream state, you know, uh, and we're getting kind of a a prelude of her sort of starting up this, you know, this journey of of defeating, you know, of convincing the live stream to go, you know, uh, battle against Meteor and stuff like that. We be friends, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm only half central, but can we be friends? Yeah. 
No, based off what we've just been talking about as well, a Zach intro again would be quite interesting. Especially if what you've yeah. just speculated is the case. Yeah. That oh man, if we got another Zach in Midgar, chapter. another Zach in Midgar oh, intro, but yeah. it's the real one this time. Oh, that would be so subversive and fucking That'd crazy. Be insane. People oh would man. Lose it. People would break immediately. Okay. All right. So that's my answer now. Zach intro part. Right. Redux and like you gotta understand when I'm like when I'm saying I want like Zach lives or I want Zach to live, you gotta remember, I'm not a Zach fan at all, no, no. at all. Like me and you I, have very similar feelings on the I, population and Crisis I, Core, and yeah. I enjoy him a lot more now in this game. Yeah, like oh, the most elevated. interesting so thing much. that I've ever seen happen to him is. Marlene telling him Cloud uh, that Aerith had feelings Aerith for Cloud, cloud. Yeah. and um, and watching his face respond, it was like there was pain, but also it was like, oh, that's the appeal of this like optimistic character that's that loves you know unconditionally, is it's like this is where you test that kind of character and show why that character like is great, and so like. And it pays off in the tunnel when he looks yeah. down at the thing, looks at Aerith thing, and he's like, I've got you, Cloud. Yeah. I've got you. I'm coming. Exactly. And then he, when it he. pays sh off beautifully. Yeah. And when, when, and I love the scene when he, like, Cloud is frozen in white, like in the white space. Mm. And he comes and he's looking at him. And he's like, huh. You've Didn't been busy. You've been yeah. busy. <laughs> You know, and I there's a little ready bit of for him when he makes contact with him, and it just yeah. goes. I was not ready for that. Oh my god! But he's still like with him. You know, it's like yeah. okay, that's Zach. I love yeah. that kind of portrayal. Like that's like like you can see that that's true to the character that was written, but has never been conveyed well in any yeah. of the. But in that, I was like yes. And then they do the wow. the the duel the the. the soldier pride and honor thing and i was like fuck Jeez. you but um <laughs> i'm a fucking legend has a has a follow-up has a good question and it, it's, a, it's a leading question but i love this uh oh, i think i know where he's leading yeah. me so where do you guys think cloud's physical body is during the boss rush at the end and i think the during the genova fight um he's where he's physically where you expect him to be but i think during the sephiroth fight mm -hmm. So I think after Sephiroth Reborn and when it goes to like Sephiroth Sephiroth, yeah. I think what Cloud's physical body is doing is lowering Aerith into the water. And I think that's part of why we see water come over the surface. Yeah, that's pretty strong. I think. That's you know. pretty strong. That's pretty strong. I was going to say that he's probably in a fugue state similar to what he is when he's traveling from the Temple of the Ancients to the Forbidden Capital. So he's just kind of dazed and confused in the background, but in his mind, all of that's going on with Zack and then Aerith and Sephiroth and all of that sort of business. But he's just kind of in a fugue state like he would be. Because we see the shots of, like, he's there with them. He can see Aerith talking, but he can't focus on it. He can't hear it. That filter's there over his eyes when we're leaving the Temple of the Ancients. And I would, I would have guessed that similar was going on. And yeah, that's insane if he's lowering everything to the water in that moment, but his brain's just cutting it off. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. But I would I would have said fugue state slash unconscious, just kind of at the back of the room. That would have been my guess. I agree. I, I mean, well, that, that also works too, because, and also time in the game, the passage of it time would be is. in the fugue state doing what he's yeah, going to do. Yeah, so, that too. That too. Absolutely. But, and the passage of time is really weird to like like in the temple of the ancients you're like two hours earlier and you're like bro it's been five minutes what are you talking yeah. about and you're like is that how time works is that why is has has several years passed in this version of of the game like is that why it's okay for for cloud to flirt with with yuffie for some reason because she became 18 um, yeah, over no. the course of time. <laughs> over the course of time. Like, what is time every... Is no. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I was thinking about, like, the 40-minute battles that I did in, in like, a, in, in with the Chadley headset on. Is like, 
is like five weeks past and, and Cloud's just like <laughs> laying in Costa del Sol. Uh, five weeks, like <laughs> hooked up to an IV bag. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, time time is a little inconsistent here. Um, but so, I mean, I think both they may they may never answer that, but it would be a really cool thing that they answer. Like if we find out oh, that yeah, like we've got to see that scene at some point. We have to see that scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if it does tie into that, they'll tell us. Yeah. And I like that, the way the water comes across. I think that's super cool, yeah. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. I, I think that's where I'm a fucking legend was leading me. Uh, I had a similar thought. So, uh, Delta Sin, by the way, Delta Sin um, is, uh, he's on Twitter and Reddit and He's one of the boldest theory crafters out there. I'm gonna put his. I'm gonna put his, his his Twitter link in this YouTube video, um, and uh, he he got uh, like really unfairly memed for just like talking about theory stuff, and, uh, and yeah, and that's BS by the way. Don't do that, please. Like, who cares? Uh, like if I've had some really dumb theories. And oh, that mate, didn't come I made to so true. Many predictions that yeah, didn't like happen. I was predicting Sephiroth versus Sephiroth. Yeah, please don't be a dick about that. Yeah, like please. So, anyways, uh, Delta Sin's got awesome, really interesting analysis. Um, super off the wall, uh, but you know, has found really weird stuff that way. You know, so mm. a big Delta Sin fan. And so he asked this question. He says. The impression I get from the ending is that corrupting the live stream sequence is part of Sephiroth's end game. What do you think this means for Terrier, Cloud, and Zack? Could that Cloud be the failsafe? I so for me, I don't think that there are really no. like functional versions of characters. I think there's just one singular soul, and they have kind of like refracted memories and damaged versions of it in the live stream. Um, so like it's a singular soul. Like I think it's very uh, uh, telling of the nature of that universe that when Cloud goes to sleep, for instance, he'll wake up say? in yeah. he'll wake up in the POV of wheelchair Cloud. In like we have that really cool scene where we're seeing it so from yeah, yeah. And so I think that maybe there might be like uh, you know memories of of hosts or something, and a soul could travel. To, you can conceptualize it that way. I don't really conceptualize it that way. I think there's just one of each of these people. And, um, you know, like, uh, the reason we see Kyrie, who's also alive in the prime world, Enjoy and them. then, and we see it in, a, in the live stream is because it's like a sort of refractive, like not concrete variant. Yeah. Them. Like a shadow yeah. of that. So yeah. it isn't, it isn't like, you know, we could pull, like, I don't get a sense that we could pull terrier versions of people two. and have two yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i i'm not getting that sense but i could be wrong about that like so mm. but that being said what you're saying is i get the ending that that the live stream sequence is something that maybe sephiroth is aware of coming mm. and is trying to do things to corrupt and um I agree that well, that's a pass. He puts into like undercutting Tifa completely in the early half of the game. Uh, absolutely. So I do think yeah. that I do think that that there's an element of that at play. I don't think that the end of that is that he is emulating Aerith in the final two scenes of the game. I do, however, think the next time we see Aerith. It will be a Genova Sephiroth illusion, you know, yep. um, and and that 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 will definitely come into play. Um, that's that's my take on it. Uh, do you, w are you just in, in total agreement on that? Pretty much, yeah. pretty much. I, I don't believe if so. Again, the fact that you have the consciousness issue between Cloud and Aerith in the Terrier timeline and Cloud and Aerith in Rebirth, like that kind of gives it away. It, I don't know. If it's a case that, you know, like in the same way that people that are important to the fate of the planet can see the whispers, maybe it's a similar situation that people that are important to the fate of the planet can't be duplicated in that manner. In a, you know, like 
we see Johnny running about, we see Kyrie running about, we see all the people potentially that are in both. Like, I would assume Marlene exists in both, otherwise that's quite horrifying. But do you know what I mean? It may, but then again, Marlene's reasonably important at yeah. the minute, isn't she? So, no, I, I don't think it is duplicates. I think you are right on that one. Yeah. I think it's kind of like, it is an interesting question. It is definitely an interesting question because there's something different about Cloud and Aerith. Yeah. stops them from being in any way conscious. Like other people, the shadows of them are conscious still. Yeah. Maybe they're not. Maybe you could go up and try and talk to them and it'd just like, bruh, 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 and they just fade away. Like, I don't know. Right. But there's something going on, but I don't think you could duplicate Cloud or duplicate Aerith. I don't think that's on. Yeah, and I think, I think too, like, um, it's, it's very reasonable for people to have a takeaway that it's like, well, these are literally copies of people. Yeah. Um, for a couple reasons. One, because that's the way Western multiverses work, um, you know, very often in stories. Like, yeah. and, you know, if you kind of think of things with, like, from a temporal causality sense, yeah. uh, I'm a little, I'm a little less attached to, you know, like the concrete nature of it, uh, for a couple reasons. One, because I don't think it it was what was conveyed here. I think the 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 nature of that interlude world was too uh like just generally incomplete. Like well, one if you look at again it from the perspective I put forward earlier yeah. that air it's kind of pieced it yeah. together from a couple of other worlds. Yeah. It it'd kind of be an incomplete set of memories essentially. Right. But the people that you see him running around are memories. Yeah. that Aerith's kind of brought into existence in this world. And the only two real people, maybe Zack a third, but the only two real people can't be conscious unless they're unconscious in the real world. And yeah. that consciousness can transfer over. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's, become active. That's, that's another what thought it feels too. like. Yeah, it feels like it's something in that in that vein, you yeah. know. Uh, the other thing too that's a little bit maybe jading my perspective is I'm familiar with the developers. Right? So like the uh, the the team, this team, meaning like Hamaguchi, Toriyama, Nomura, and Nojima, have done multiversal mechanics yes. in other games, and they very much more match this kind of thing, which which is like, uh, which is like sort of like a shared soul. Um, so very specifically, thirteen twos multiversal temporal mechanics really one they are they do they don't engineer well right so they're not they're never going to be the same kind of like satisfying as like a i keep bringing up like christopher nolan movies but like there's there's gonna be this etheric nature of it like it's not ultra concrete i'm not saying that they haven't made that you know they haven't decided to do different this time i could be wrong but like if I were to like gun to my head, make a value judgment, I'm going to look at the way they've previously conceptualized the multiverse and recognize it's probably going to be consistent with that style when so many other it's things are consciousness based yeah. rather than physicality based. Yeah. Vibes based. Yeah. Vibes yeah. based. Vibe based. Based vibe. Uh, oh God, I hate myself. Ice fire <laughs> and all things crazy asks, what if the cutscene with Zack in intermission is actually post rebirth and things got just got timey wimey? So this the Zack cut we never brought up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So the Zack cutscene in intermission, I I I think there's two possibilities. There's only two places that I feel like it could possibly fit. It's like after rebirth. Yep. Or right, right before the final scene with Zack. And what we're seeing when Zack opens the door and is like, where's Aerith? Is that he had literally entered the church and then just waited there forever for people to leave. And then that's when we see him, right? Like, so that's him in just like the straight up Beagle verse, you know? When we saw the trailer shot yeah. that we saw of Zack sat on the stairs and then Sephiroth's like, no, not you, and slashes at him, I thought, so has he gone into the church already? Yeah. Seeing she's not there and just sat on the steps. That was my first initial yeah. thought of that. So that, that's very, very plausible. I think are I we think seeing, are we seeing? Yeah. So you know, like we had this duplicate world created. This this world in the live stream, potentially, yeah. or whatever it is, whatever that world was. 
are we potentially seeing that an after effect of that could be that the real Zack survived and he's just turned up at Midgar while we've swanned off and carried on about our business. I don't think that that's the case. I'm just throwing it out there as a second I, possibility. So I think it's sort of a mixture of both. I think the Zack that we just saw fall through the portal just shows up and he's like, oh, I guess I'm in Midgar again. Knocks on the door and opens it and goes, Aerith? And recognizes Aerith isn't there. And then just hangs out in there. Everyone leaves. And then the final time, the final thing, and then then we see him in, in Rebirth saying, well, I guess I can reunite the worlds. Who's to say I can't reunite the worlds? I think that's a place that it could, I guess, technically be. It still strains plausibility, doesn't feel like it flows well. It there could is be also like we were talking about those shadow versions of yeah. people or whatever they are, those echo versions of yeah. people. I suppose that's a better representation. Maybe the Zack that we see open the church door is the echo version of Zack, but existing in the real world. And then when whatever happens in Rebirth happens, yeah. the consciousness is come together. Who's well, to I, say? I don't know. I'm just throwing wild shit out there now. It could also be completely abandoned. It could just be nothing. It could be retconned. It would yeah. not be the first time that a secret ending that you get from a a Nomura a Nomura given DLC yeah. ends up not aligning perfectly, but instead just like introduces themes and new characters. Yeah. But doesn't actually fit in the canon. There are instances that that's what happened. It was supposed to do it. Got everybody to it yeah. kill. Imagine if it was just something to kill that Zack is actually dead. Because that was a real strong belief. I'm sure a lot of people still feel exactly. Yeah, the same a lot of people still now. feel yeah. But I imagine if that wasn't it, it was just an attempt to be like, no, no, Zach. Yeah. Zach's yeah. gonna be here. Uh, Zach's gonna be big. Because a lot of people were just like, no, nah, he won't appear. The game will start and we'll see him just die as normal, and that'll be fine. I remember seeing a lot of people saying that post remake. Yeah. So maybe it was just an attempt to like shoot those kind of theories down and just be like, no, 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 Zach. It's interesting. It's very interesting, but it's got to come up at some point. They can't have just dropped it. It would be still weird, even though they've done it before, and even though we can make sense of it, it would still be weird for them to just drop it completely. Um, There needs to be an explanation at the very least. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that needs explanations. I will admit, the like, timeline. it's... I will admit, I will admit that it's, like, it's something I don't necessarily think they will address. <laughs> Yeah, oh no, they won't. And, if they and, decide to drop it, yeah. we'll never hear anything about it again. Yeah, and I'll be okay with yeah. that. I, I can survive okay. that. Um, will you be disappointed if Genova exists after Part 3 has ended? Why or why not? Also, why does Sephiroth control her, vice versa? Or also, does Sephiroth control her, vice versa, or something else? The question. That's a good question. So I did a video on this ages ago, who's in control, Sephiroth or Genova. And I've always been of the opinion that it is Sephiroth in control, but there is Genova influence there. Yeah. Like, I, I view Genova very much as the thing. I'm pretty sure most people kind of do view Genova as, like, as the thing sort of entity. I think it enables Sephiroth a lot. I think it's corrupted him to the point that his actions are different to what they would have been without Genova. But I do think it's Sephiroth that's doing these things. He's in control of his faculties. He knows, well, he's in control of his faculties ish. But he knows what he's doing. He's the driving force in my yeah. opinion. He is the driving force. Genova facilitates, he does. I think that they have played with the idea of complicating the relationship. Yeah. And peeled back heavily this game. Yeah. I also, so something too is. Um, and I'll look more into this, and I've, I've been looking into it. It does feel like they really peeled back from the Ore, um, yeah, the Ore so Watashi thing. On yeah, Focus so on that's kind of changed a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, or, or, or that the or diminished. Yeah, the, the, he just uses both now all the time. Yeah, which I guess is whatever. Which is still yeah. a difference, but it's it's like I feel like they were really playing that up into something that maybe they've peeled back from. Um, I'm going to ask one more question. There's been really good questions that I... As far as Genova being gone at yeah. the end of part three, it depends what they're doing. If they're just linking back into Advent Children, then... then no, obviously not, yeah. Be. If it's something different and they want to have a degree of finality to it, yeah. I suppose Genova has to go, really, doesn't she? Like, we've not won if Genova doesn't go. 
Yeah. Unless Absolutely. we go with a bittersweet, slightly dark ending, which I'd be fucking down with. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, read I'm a fucking legend follow up. Okay, let's see. So, okay. Um, too much chat has happened. So I missed, I missed the follow up. So if he wants to repost it, that's fine. Um, yeah, because there's only so much I can I can scroll yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. We do talk. Yeah, can you repost your follow up and we'll wait. Um, no. uh, so uh, Delta Sin says his read on the um, Watashi Ori shift personas is that future Sephiroth is just Genova now, like they're one and the same. I can see that. I feel like they kind of have just. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I've not really looked into it that much as far as the Japanese script goes, but I mean, is it potentially like when he's talking to... Is he using one specifically when he's talking to Cloud or... It's very inconsistent. when he's talking to Ares? Is it very inconsistent? Yeah. There might be a pattern we just haven't unlocked yet, but I haven't. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, but uh, I kind of believe Delta and what he's saying. So I'm... So we're going to wait for... I'm a fucking Legends follow-up and then... Um, and then call it okay i think seth initially succeeded in controlling cloud once he banishes zach he says alone at last and transforms uh the white whispers uh then go crazy and pin reborn down yeah uh, and he uses a move called wall and lacrim or lacrima yeah wait, wait. uh I, yeah i uh i feel like that's conveyed pretty clearly like that there's a that this is a this is a um a tearful vessel tearful right vessel. Mm. yeah uh that makes sense because he's crying yeah so so okay i get what you're saying so what you're saying is that he already what you already got control of cloud in that moment when he gets rid of zach this is super good i love this great job okay so i'm a fucking legend so i get what you're saying so what what he's saying is that we see two versions of of Aerith's death scene. One inside Cloud's mind and yeah. one as a viewer. Right? So while Cloud is crying and having that, you know, and we have all of that, like, uh, all of his dialogue that he has in the OG where he's crying. While that's happening, Cloud is fighting in his mind against Sephiroth. Yeah. And that not only is the, um, we're watching we're watching this external sort of struggle between these two versions of events or like we're seeing the fight for cloud sanity both outside mm. and inside that's very interesting that's that's super cool um good spot i am going to definitely credit you if if that makes its way i get what you're saying that's so smart man that's a good find do you get what he's saying? I'm, I'm... It would also kind of tie in with what you said about that. Then when the water appears, that's when clouds right. lower in Aerith into the water. So, right. Because it'd, be, it'd follow the chronology of events while get... that fight's going on in his mind. The only thing that throws the events out of sequence a little bit is the fact that, like, the non-party, like the or the non-cloud, you know, yeah. like Yuffie They're and everybody, scored. they also fight against Ephroth yeah. Reborn. So that so it does it kind of so there is a little bit of a a weird reconciliation, but I think thematically you're right. There's a reverberation of so in the same way that Cloud and Aerith are wrestling for control in this very like top layer where um, where Aerith is feeding Cloud this vision that you know um, he was successful and uh that he successfully fought off the whispers in the same in the same like maybe thematic time frame yeah inside cloud's mind there's this battle for his going sanity on. Yeah. going on um i like that i, I like think it. that's really I, like it. I i it's not it's not like tight in the way that like once again like a christopher nolan thing would be mm. and and like the exact flow of events I would need to really like lay that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna spreadsheet that. It's very good. Party says the whisper. What did you? Th oh, oh. Okay, the party says the whisper got him, and then reborn is literally pulled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through by the whisper. Oh, okay, 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 okay. 
All right. He also summons Bahamut Whisper. Sephiroth Reborn heals Bahamut to keep him alive. Ah, okay. Hit me well, up outside of this. I, I'm, I'm yeah. interested to hear more of your thoughts on this. That's There's good shit there. My take on that scene was that when he got rid of Zap, he was about to take control of Cloud. But then Aerith kind of comes in and puts the kibosh on that. One interesting thing I've actually just remembered, though, thinking about that. What did you think of the moment when Cloud's walking up to Aerith? And it doesn't look like he lifts the sword. It looks like the same kind of black tendrily energy that we get off the black materia. And it looks like that lifts the sword, if I'm remembering the cutscene correctly. It, yeah. I mean... And I don't know if that's... It feels like it could easily be a manifestation of Sephiroth's will. And it's the struggle between Sephiroth's will and Aerith's will on cloud in that moment. That's kind of what it feels like, but I don't know, something about it looked Black Materia-esque to me. I think, I think, yeah, that's, that was the vibe I got as, so it's, I will admit that was a little over conveyed to me in a way that I didn't necessarily like. I do think that yeah. like in the OG, like there was a less is more element where it's like, you could not move the joystick any other way. So like Rob you of the agency. Him do it. Yeah. yeah. And so now instead we're getting like a we're getting to physically see that and it does ruin the yeah. moment a little bit. But also I think it's necessary to do because it's sort of highlighting the new meta battle between the two. You know, yeah. and reframing it in there. Um so yeah. But I thought it was a bit weird because yeah, in the OG it wasn't like that. Yeah. It was cloud. It was yeah. unquestionably cloud in the OG. And you just couldn't do anything about it. Whereas with this you see it literally just grabs the sword and lifts it up, doesn't it? So, yeah, a bit weird. But yeah. That's an interesting, interesting point, that. I'm going to have to have a... I, that's me re-watching the ending two more times because of that point. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, okay, we're kind of near the end. I, I do want to say... Um, I do want to just make sure there isn't, like, a quick final question. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to end with this question because it is, it is like, future... Talk, right so what do you guys think the implications of cloud knowing about zach already has on the live stream sequence will Aerith's death be included in the live stream sequence in part three and i've answered this a couple times a couple of different ways in um other casts but let's hear your answer so it's interesting because i feel like the live stream scene by necessity is going to have to change anyway even before cloud knew about zach because yeah. cloud's so much further along in his kind of degradation so i feel like it's going to be harder to convince cloud when we reach that point eventually it's going to be tougher to dig cloud out of the hole especially if like i was kind of speculating earlier we do end up with him on this journey to the north crater kind of realizing what happened and what actually happened back there with Aerith. if that happens this live stream scene is going to need to be huge but you would think him knowing about that would fix him to a certain degree because if he wasn't actually there how does he know Zach? yeah you know what i mean so you'd think it'd actually piece him in some ways it'd be like oh shit i forgot about my friend what what happened to my friend but in other ways it'd be oh well except for us telling me that i was a puppet that wasn't there but i know zach and i definitely was there it's good you know it's, what i mean it, yeah it's, I... A, it's a weird one how that's going to work out i'm intrigued to see how the live stream scene pans out because it is definitely going to be different i think it will incorporate potentially some of what goes down with Aerith at the end and it's definitely going to include this Aerith that Cloud's going to continue seeing because like you were saying earlier we're definitely going to see some Sephiroth illusion version of Aerith in Cloud's mind 100% I I agree um I do think that the important part of Cloud's identity stuff can still like feel intact because he still doesn't know he's not a first class soldier. Right? Yeah. He so still at least that he doesn't he, know. Yet. Yeah. And so, like, and he still doesn't really understand the nature. Like, he still believes that most of what he told true. them yeah. is true. So that will need to get walked back. So there's that. But I do because think that, that scene where he, has, yeah. he, he sees Zach floating down the river towards him and replaces the soldier grunt with Zach. And it's Zach that goes down the river and falls off. And that's when he goes and tells yeah. uh, Tifa, isn't it? So he's already working to yeah. fix the issue. 
Yeah. And Genova will definitely facilitate that. I think the I think the si the scale of the live stream sequence will be much larger. I really do. Yeah. I think it's the crux of the game. It's the real, or it's the crux of the OG. So like, it's it's got to carry three games, yep. you know. And in order to do that, doing it one for one is not the move. And we also got half of the live streams, not half, but we got part of the live stream it's sequence already to, yep. to kind of get us. So I think they've made a, an effort to really. You know, and I keep bringing this up is that the affinity system uh, is not is is limited to your clouds relationships with characters, not their relationships with each other. So when you're building affinity, feel about how cloud has built this, you know, these people that support him and make him who he is. And um, as cheesy as the power of friendship is as a like a as a thing, it is still technically the point of. Yeah. Final Fantasy 7 like um you know he who Cloud is his journey what they're doing is I think they're adding more cast members to him finding himself you know yeah. and now to assuage some fears from you know like uh certain uh people that think that you know that are worried about in particular Cloud and Tifa's relationship in, in the scene I think she is still the critical element like she's yeah. still the leader of all of this and i still think that it can be in a done in a way that includes like realizations about Aerith's true fate and realizations about you know that you know uh capitalize on the relationship and friendship that zach and cloud have and that cloud has with all of these other characters um i think all of that can still be portrayed without it threatening you know, like this, you know, the the dynamic where, you know, Tifa alone sort of knows yeah. what Cloud was like before all of this and how important that is. The crux of it is that yeah. she can go all the way back yeah. to Cloud's childhood. Because, yeah. I mean, the big thing of it in the OG was Cloud had been convinced that he wasn't a real boy, essentially. Yeah. And she can be like, no, 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 no. I knew you all this time back then. So I, I don't think we can diminish the importance of that. And, and I don't think they would. I, yeah. I, I genuinely don't think they would. Yeah. Even with a, additional stuff being put in there, the yeah. core of it would still be that Tifa can confirm Cloud's existence and Cloud yeah. being real. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it, though, because, my God, with what they've done with some of the scenes in Rebirth, you imagine what they're going to do with that live stream scene. I... I... I don't know. I feel, I feel almost I'm scared because it's like but we it's, overhype it and overexpect. And I'm also going to be really let down if they don't do the same thing with the music where they have like they have Hans Zimmer come and just do one track. Like, I don't know. That track went so hard and I want that same motif, but maybe with like all of the characters, you know? Um, yeah. Emma, so Emma that's, knows the truth. Yeah, Emma's right about that. So okay it's been incredible having you here i know there's a ton more questions we've got to call it though so um, i know yeah there's there's so much to talk to we'll have to do it again in six months once we've finally let it all yeah and, we, and you know we'll, like we'll both be streaming more so we just hop in on each other's shit still yeah so, we'll, do, we'll, yeah. Do we'll, we'll do more stuff but yeah it's been fun i needed this i really did need this i'm gonna be honest with you because i'm still like well within the first week of yeah I, that's kind of so why i, I wanted to this. get you that's kind of why i wanted to get you too is like get the fresh raw yeah the fresh raw yeah. you and so i think that um you know the you know you'll your your thoughts on this will like evolve and, oh, and stuff like that over time um and i'm excited to see what you know what comes from you so um for everybody at home uh on youtube thank you for tuning in um and uh i'm gonna just very much success definitely recommend that you subscribe. like and subscribe to everything subscribe. that sector six does um he's got good lore videos on youtube and then uh really underrated twitch presence like he gets he he says some weird funny stuff he's that is like most unhinged late at night so definitely check him out about this time about this time yeah usually what about this time yeah <laughs> So be sure and check them out. Um, so for that, we're 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 gonna say goodbye, YouTube.